Hello and welcome to the Martial Arts Chat Podcast. On today's episode, we're looking ahead to Valor's bare knuckle boxing event and we'll be speaking with all the big fighters from that card and promoter Ken Shamrock. And you know, obviously you've been fighting for a long time now, Mo, haven't you? Like a long time. So what, what's what's the secret? You know, what's the secret to your to your longevity of your fight career? Oh shoot, man! I don't know, man. The man upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> but good, man. I keep going, man. Because obviously the way the way you fight, we know you're quite. You train really hard for your fights. You come in really like well well fit and ready to go. Do you find you just get yourself ready to them and you put and you put yourself in the correct situations, which has sort of led to where you are now? Um, yeah, most of the time, you know, when you ain't dealing with the uh, the outside struggles of uh of the fight world, you know what I mean? Oh, just dealing with every <clears throat> the normal life, it gets it gets it gets a little complicated when you try to focus on fighting and <clears throat> dealing with the you know everyday life the real world as they say yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> getting in that getting that cage or that ring must feel like the easy part of the job for you doesn't it sometimes uh, a thousand times easier <laughs> well we definitely like watching you doing it anyway obviously i don't know what your home life's about but i'm sure it's very i'm sure it's great home life you've got but i'm sure it's very busy Have you got yourself a family mo and everything as well yeah i got i got my family i got my kids and uh yeah, got a. Uh, yeah, I got a bundle of kids. <laughs> Sometimes uh, well, they're, they're another another job right there to deal with, but you know that's life for you, man. Yeah, but it must be so cool having your dad as like one of the biggest superstars in combat sports. You know, they must be proud of that with you. Like, how old's the youngest and how old's the oldest? Well, I got, I, I got two different marriages. My, I'm on my second one, and um, my youngest is five. And my oldest for my first marriage is 26. Okay, cool, man. So you've almost started that journey again with the young, young, young one again, eh? How does? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, going through it all over again. <laughs> so what do they think? About... Sorry, carry on. Oh, it's um, I don't know, man. It's normal for me. I, I enjoy my kids and um, raising them. It's always been something I've. Do they compete yeah. at all? Do they do anything at all, like martial arts wise or anything like that? Follows in your footsteps yeah. at all? Yeah, all, all of them trained uh, 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 as self defense, but um, my oldest right now, he's competing right now. But all my younger ones, they're all uh, they all come to the school. And they take a kid's class and they compete. I try to keep them um, active in the sport, just for you know health reasons and self defense. And do you think it's important as well, kids of a young age nowadays aren't just hanging around on the streets or just playing computer games all the time. It's important they get into some sort of sport where they can feel some sense of achievement as such. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, at the same token, i got to be, as uh, as a parent, I, I, main thing, I want to stay in their head, you know. Let them know that, you know what I mean, there's this, there's that, <laughs> you know. There's more to life as such. Yeah, yeah. there's more to life than just, uh, I mean, training and one thing, it, it helps with your mental um, and your health. Keeps you out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, of course, you know, keeping out of trouble. I mean, you know, I, you teach that at home with, with the, the rights and the wrongs, you know what I mean, and just staying in their ear all the time. It must be nice for you though to see that they've they're interested in something you've been interested. Um, you've obviously dedicated your whole whole life to, you know. And um, would you would you see would you see them compete one that, like you say your eldest competes at the moment. Um, what does he compete in? If you mind me asking. Oh yeah, he's competing in football. Uh, my oldest he he's competing in MMA when he was like 12, 13 years old. Oh wow. He's also fighting on the same K one card as me in uh, Hawaii. Really. Where, yeah, they actually put him in. A, the guys that organized it sort of played played some funny business with me where they, they sort of put him in with a guy that was way more experienced than he was, where he actually got hurt. That's where I knocked out everybody. <laughs> I, that, that tournament in Hawaii where I sort of, uh, sort of 
knocked everybody out. Yeah, that was the 2007, wasn't Seven. it, Grand Prix? Yeah, 2007. So, yeah, what was that yeah. like then? What that First of all, before the fights even started sort of thing, um, how did that feel, you know, fighting on the same card as your son, you know? This it, was a wonderful, it was a wonderful thing. I mean, I was, I, was a, I was a proud father. But when the, his opponent, they said, was 17 years old, the day of the fight, the guy takes off his robe and he's got tattooed. He's got Muay Thai tattooed on his back. And I was like, this guy, he's 17 years old. How old was <laughs> so your boy at the time? Out. Huh? How old was your boy at the time? He just turned 14. Oh. The guy I heard was 21. But they, they said he was 17. And he was he was green. That's, yeah. Oh, that's disgusting, man. Yeah. Very disgusting, man. And I was... I couldn't believe these guys did it. And they said, if they swore up and down, this guy's only 17 and he's green. He's never had no fights, but they made him an exhibition fight. And, That's... um, yeah. But, well, so what happened then when you saw this? Did you, obviously, did you let the fight go on or what, what happened? Oh, well, when I seen him, I grabbed the towel, but my son was, you know, he's being aggressive. He's, he's got, he's been boxing ever since he was like four or five, but he's been kickboxing less than a month but he was willing to take it just to be on the same card with me and i and, and k1 the k1 guys promised me they would put in somebody that he could beat on that wouldn't be that serious of a fighter come to find out the guy was 21 and had a record already of fighting and he and, and he wasn't 17. the guys who organized him uh yeah yeah it seemed like they're trying to sell the show by having father and son on the same card sort of thing you know yeah, and they didn't really care about what happened to my son. But he still went in there and did his best, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. He got hurt, and he was like, well, where are we going? But, you know, I, I, I couldn't believe these guys did that. So yeah, I eventually uh, showed him what a father's rage is, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've, I've seen the highlights, and I recommend anyone to watch the highlights as well of that, of that Grand Prix. Yeah. If you're, yeah. This is why you don't upset Mighty Mo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That was crazy. Oh, yeah. that just... uh, Go on. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say that's what happens, man. If, if that's just if that's if if that's you're upset, you know, generally like upsetting a family member. God, that must have been beast mode, you know, Hulk mode. Oh, bro, man, I, I KO'd everybody. <laughs> Alexander Piskunov. <laughs> yeah, I I remember, and um, obviously doing in Hawaii must have been nice as well. Um, and that 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 was your second one as well, wasn't it? Your second Grand Prix you won. Yeah, yeah, that, that was my second one. Yeah, man, you had a, such a great... Had, I say, if you look through your career... Obviously, I don't need to tell you, but the people that are listening, you know, we're talking about a guy as a kickboxer who had 42 fights, 18 MMA fights, you know. You had three fights in professional boxing as well, like a couple of knockouts. Yeah. It's just... You really yeah. have you really have done it all, and not to remember, and to remind everyone, in MMA, you had 12 wins, all by finishes as well. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? You won a competition, so you spent... Sorry. I mean, I could have did better, but, you know, just like I was saying, man, just dealing with a lot of the outside um, uh, struggles, man. I lost focus a few times, as you can tell by my weight. <clears throat> and um, But um, I think that's another reason why I never really retired and because I felt I've always been cheated out of, um, you know, who I, who, what, what my real potential was. Yeah. Just by dealing with a lot of outside um, um, well, you had a great run in Road FC, though. You know, you you won all their open weight tournaments and everything, didn't you? It was a fantastic run. Yeah, I was. Yeah, that, like I said, man, going into that last fight where I lost, man, it was. Uh, I was going. I was going through a lot of outside issues, and I, I I didn't even sleep that whole night before that fight. Oh man, and Gilbert Ravel's no like, there's no yeah. no walkover. <laughs> yeah, but he knew what it was, and but. Oh, man, you know, I was disappointed. Yeah, you shouldn't be, though. What what a great run you're home beforehand, though, and he was a solid fighter, you know. I, I wouldn't, I'd hold your head high, you know. You're thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away, well, not thousands of thousands of miles, but you're a long way from home, you know. And, um, but that's, that's what I want to talk about, really, is what actually took you to, um, you know, took you abroad, because obviously you went to fight for, I think it was Heroes 8, then you went to Dream and places like that. Like what, what what made you decide, you know, you're going to move to Japan and fight over there? Uh, in 
Japan. What do you mean as far as K1? Well, yeah, yeah. So sorry, and K1 as well. Sorry, yeah. All, all your fighting career. Oh, in Korea, uh, no, no, just the opportunity was there, you know, um, the, um, I would, UFC wouldn't, wouldn't give me what I wanted, and they, they wouldn't give me no offer or nothing, so I just went, the next opportunity I had, and the other FC had, had, um, opportunity right there, and I took it. Well, you had a stint in, um, also you had a stint in Bellator as well, didn't you? You had a good stint there. Yes, I, 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 t I took a loss in the Bellator. Uh, fighting um, uh, what's his name again? Russian Volkov. Kid. Yeah, Volkov. Uh, uh, once again, man, lost focus, dealing with too much outside pressure, and paid the price. Yeah, man. But again, that guy's tearing through the UFC at the moment as well. So it just shows you're still hanging in there with with the best. You know, yeah. it's just if you if yeah. as you said, if you had your complete focus there, completely yeah. different story. Yes, no, you're absolutely. Well, yeah, that's what it is, boss. You, I mean, you, you get. I mean, I, I've made it look. Uh, when I'm on top of my game, I make it look easy. Yeah, well, we can tell with the amount of finish. Obviously, you finish everyone, don't you? And there's no yeah. decision wins. And even in boxing, you know, the only loss you had was on points. The other two guys, you knocked out. Yeah. So that's what I mean. You could you, anyone who looks who who knows who you are, obviously properly, watched your career and seen everything you've done. It has been you can't really deny it's not been a successful career. <laughs> you know you've done really well. You've done a lot of experience, travelled all around the world. And was there anywhere in particular in the world where you really felt you learnt the most about about yourself in the sport? Um, I would say. Um... Uh, just I, I I knew who I was when I was uh, at the top of my game. Yeah, man. And just you know, I fought everywhere, and and I and I understood where where a lot of the times I, I went in and um, just dealing with a lot of a lot of negativity going into these fights and coming from the closest ones to me. But you know, um, and at the end of the day, man, you're a fighter, and you got to be able to focus. And, that's it. And uh, cut all that stuff out, you know. But uh, I was at an older age now. I see that now, and, and and I think that's one of the main reasons why I ain't retired. Because I have a lot to prove to myself. Like if I stay focused, no matter what, I can I can finish strong. Yeah, man. Age is just a number, mate. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. you know, at Randy Couture fought till he was 49 years old. He probably could have carried on. To be fair to him. Um, oh, right. I'm right now at this moment I'm destroying everybody exactly I feel, I feel the strongest right now that's it and um, I stay I watched uh, just watching some of your more recent fights as well it's just the the spark hasn't gone you've still got the same explosiveness but it seems like now you are a lot more focused on your fights would you say and focused on what's going on yes yeah, sir yeah man it's really really showing through so obviously you've had such this great career for all these different sports different countries you know different disciplines how did you find, though, tran um, transitioning between all these disciplines through your career? Like from the K1 rules to MA rules, just to boxing rules. How did you find, like, moving between all the different rules and things like that? It's funny It's funny you say that because uh, my life was growing up doing all that in one package. Um, we wrestled, we, we fist fight, we boxed, we kicked ever since I was a youngster. I did everything, and I played American football, and I, I just, you know, I was, I was, a, 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 at my age now, I still, I still do a lot of those things, basketball, football, you know, sometimes I, I play with my kids, and those, those sports, and it's uh, never ended, I mean, to me, it's normal, it's like an everyday thing, but I grew up with Boxing and wrestling, man. Yeah. So is that what you were doing then before combats, before you entered the world of like MMA or kickboxing? It was just mainly yes. wrestling, yeah? Yes, sir. Boxing was that like, and wrestling. Was and wrestling, I was, was it a school you were doing wrestling, like high school and things like that? Yeah, American football, uh, American wrestling, collegiate wrestling. Yeah, man, that's the thing. You guys over there, I know it's getting better in the UK and Europe, but you guys have the, the such fantastic collegiate wrestling skills over there. 
and um, yeah. it proves that a lot of our UK fighters and European fighters heading over to the States and, you know, spending training camps with guys like yourself, you know. Yeah. So, obviously, now then, you've gone between all these disciplines, you've grown up, you've grown up, obviously, fighting them all. It's sort of like driving a car then, yeah? So, going into bare knuckle now, what, what sort of changes have you made for this? Because, obviously, with bare knuckle, it's more precise punching. You can't just, obviously, punch anywhere in the head. How have you, yeah. prepared, have you, have you prepared for this, wearing gloves your whole career? Uh, well, just, uh, just a lot of shadow boxing and... You know, kind of box with, with an opponent in front of you, bare fist. And, and uh, it's a lot of sparring. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I don't need to give too much away. I don't need to give it <laughs> to your opponent sort of thing, you know. Um, I don't need to know your game plan sort of thing. Yeah. But what but what interested you with bare knuckle? Why, why, did you, why did you approach them or they approach you? Like, what made you want to do this sport? Uh, just the opportunity to compete still because a lot of the, right now, I mean, for me, that, that, that that's the next thing available for me. Uh, but uh, I, I'm I'm ready for whatever. I've, I've been competing my whole life. <laughs> and bare knuckle is exactly something I, you know, as a, as a street fighter, is uh, something I started off with. And I was very dominant. Before I even turned pro, or even thought about going pro. <laughs> <laughs> so you're confident going in. You say you are confident. You're confident going into this fight, and obviously after the fight, if, if you win the fight, or should I say when you win the fight, is it something you'd like to keep on doing and competing in that, or would you just wait until any opportunity comes your way? Yeah, I would wait till any opportunity come, or I would keep on doing it if, if, if nothing else comes. Because I, I, you know. I just I just want to compete, and I mean I, I I can't stop competing until I mean until the good man upstairs tells me I can't. As far as he know, as far as I know, um, I'm I'm healthy. I'm as healthy as a horse, and strong as ever. Well, no, and you, I said as I said in your one one of your like more previous fights, like more recent fights, you can tell there's there's you still got the same spring in your step you did back in back in the day sort of thing, you know. Back in the Road FC yeah. days, back in the Bellator days. Yeah. So um, I feel way better. Trust me, you're gonna see some, you're gonna see some fireworks this one. And this, <laughs> I, I, hey, like I said, like I told him, like he's already talking smack. I said, hey, make sure you don't blink. <laughs> that's, that's how fast my hands are coming. And powerful. <laughs> So, do you know much about your opponent? Like, tell us, tell us who your opponent is. Obviously, people who don't know, and um, yeah, obviously, Soko tell us Joe, a bit about him. Or Soko, Soko Ju, whatever his name is. Yep, uh, Thierry Chokoju, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see him. He's active, lighter, lighter weight class, but he's messing with a lot more, more muscle and power now, and speed. So, I see the way he moves. I see, I see but you know. Everybody knows how I, I, I can adjust uh, different styles, especially now that I'm more, more focused, um, training very hard, nonstop. But, um, yeah, he's messing yeah. with a lot of power now, a lot of power. So how much bigger than him are you? And, like, like, what weight class does he usually fight at, for people who don't know? And, you know, is he coming up? Is he having to put on quite a lot of weight for this? Or are you going to be oh, weighing no, no. Well, right now I'm at uh, 264. That's what's the, the limit? Right. I, I'm at 264 right now. Okay. And what soccer do you actually reckon? Uh, about 235 or 240, I think, or something. And you and you feel the, you've got the speed on him still as well? Oh yes. I see the way he moves. Okay. I see, I see and, and and me at 265 is very light. I mean. <laughs> Last time I was 265, 264, when I fought Raymond Bonyowski, or when I was in Bellator, and I KO'd the guy. Hence the open weight tournaments. What were, what were you, do you mind me asking, what were you weighing in Road FC in some of those fights? Uh, up, up in the 290s. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. No, no, no wonder you're knocking him. No, no, no wonder you're knocking everyone out, but some of those guys you were knocking out were bigger than you, taller than you. It's crazy. Uh, Brother man, 
I am a lot faster and stronger now and quicker. Well, you've proved all you need to do is touch their chin, really, don't you? The way people just crumple, especially in in the in the Hawaiian Grand Prix as well. Oh my God! So, oh, yeah. what's going to happen without the gloves on now? Exactly. Devastation. <laughs> hey, my hands are going to be a lot faster. And my hands, I'll, my hands yep. will be a lot faster. A lot faster, more focused, you know, and and you finding it comfortable sitting at the weight you are now because you've still got a while, haven't you? So you must be comfortable now. Oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'm man, I'm way lighter now. I'm way lighter now, and I'm faster and stronger. Footwork is. Just... We'll see. Yeah, man. Okay, it's not give. I don't want to give him too much away. <laughs> oh well, well, you know. <laughs> It's going to be, uh, I feel good, fast, strong, and powerful. <clears throat> no, that's it. And this, I spoke to Ken Shamrock on an interview like I'm doing with yourself yesterday, and he was explaining how I was asking, like, what's the difference between your bare knuckle and other organizations? And um, he's very adamant. It's all about he's going to have no ham wraps. Did you know about that? Oh, uh, uh... So there'll be no uh, wraps. It'll be pure, it, it, so I was speaking to Ken Shamrock yesterday and we were talking about the difference between his bare knuckle organization compared to other ones. And he says the diff, his main difference is he doesn't want any ham wraps on the fighters. It's just going to be pure bare knuckle. You know, what do you think uh, about that? Oh, man, like I told you, I grew up doing that first. <laughs> That's well, it. <laughs> bro, relentlessly, undefeated. I'm undefeated on the streets. That's what made me go into pro fighting because when I was younger, uh, I, I was relentless. What people fail to realize that I went pro in kickboxing with no amateur background. That's what people fail to realize. That's what all my fans fail to realize. Every fighter out there. I went pro in the professional world of kickboxing, KOing guys with just my hands and learning how to defend the kick. See, it was the, like the genius of New Day Mike Tyson, it felt like. Just coming in oh, and yeah. knocking neck and knocking everyone out. Oh, yeah. Come on, boss. You can look it up <laughs> if you want. I don't have no amateur background going into the kickboxing world. <laughs> it must be like... The... <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I see, again, so I've learned something myself, you know, and I've, I've known you for a while. Now, it's really interesting to know straight in. That's probably why they probably underestimated you and they probably thought, Jesus, this guy, who's this guy? <laughs> Exactly. I mean, even though I took some some kicks to the face and the legs, you know what I mean. But it's still, I was I was like, I was I was built like a tank. Yeah. What doesn't what only what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and it obviously yeah. makes sense with you. So, and also, it must be some sort of Samoan power that you guys have. You know, you got the, you got Mark Hunt, the Super Samoan. He knocks people out when he touches people on the chin. And the yeah. same thing with you as well. What is it? What, what's over there in the water or the food you're eating, guys? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, man, I just know that, that I was able to, do, I was blessed to be able to do do what I did. Um, you know what I mean? Coming in and uh, dominating like I did. But, and like I said, one of my main issues was that I, I couldn't, I didn't understand how to stay focused enough to, to stay on top of the game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and no matter how strong you are, how much, you know, how hard you can hit, if you don't stay focused, you, you, I mean, you know the deal. Yeah, man. And you know what, I'm not trying to have a dig, and it does reflect in your career, because you have your winning streaks, you know, and then you're on focus, and then you have these tiny yeah. little spells you know we have one or two losses and then again a winning streak you know and is yeah. that is that is that due is that really showing like when in your life this sort of stuff was going on and like really affecting you oh, oh, without well, making man, excuses yeah. obviously we hit it right on the nail i mean but um i mean we all go through our struggles but i, I, I me as a, as a fighter um i i, I didn't um you, didn't know how to deal with a lot of that issues, you know, and, and not too many guys that that were ahead of me in the fight game that I could uh, that that would mentor me or or, or uh, you know you know keep me above water. 
and uh, I sort of had to learn everything on my own at the time. But you know, that's life. You know, can't complain. But that's just what it was for me. When when you were fighting in Japan and China and Korea and things, were you did you move over there or were you over there? Were you did you go with like family or were you literally on your own? Uh, I was I was eventually on my own. Uh, my family was too used to the American life, and they didn't want to go out there. And but uh, I wish I would have took them. But um, yeah, man. But you know, your family supports you. Yeah, I mean, they, they supported me. I always wanted to take them, but it was it was it was, it was a lot. It was it, it's complicated. Yeah, and with kids as well and stuff, you know, moving them around, it's never easy, yeah. is it? Yeah, and we also had family members too that were, I mean, extended family members that we had to deal with, and it was, it was always complicated. Oh, yeah, man, you sound like you've got a lot of things to deal with outside of the cage as well as in, and as as and I hope you hope it's I hope now you're nice, you're focused, and things are looking nice and clearer. You sound like it's good. You've got yourself a five year old boy, you know, when your your eldest is competing, which you're very proud of, of course. Yeah. So, and you're bearing up we'll fighting see, soon. We'll, and, yeah. uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You know, I mean, our kids are man. One minute they want it, the next minute they don't. You know what I mean? uh, they'll always. Well, look, I'm 32, right? And I, I still always call my mother most days and my father. You know, <coughs> if there's ever a problem, trust me, we're the first people you ring. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, it always comes down to that in the end. I always find that anyway. <laughs> but Mo, yeah. man, you, you, you've, you've obviously you, you set a good example, though. You know your career by you know taking opportunities when they come at you, you know, and uh, making the most of everything. And you know, you, if anything, it's inspiring to a lot of people out there to see what you've done. And it's also to see that you've come back at obviously not say not come back. You're still fighting later on in your fighting career, and you're still and you're faster and stronger than ever. You know that must be a, that must feel good in yourself as well as to show other people that they can still do it as well. Oh yeah. I, I hope so, you know, man, it's always good to, to, to hear people say, man, you know, that, wow, man, you're still doing it. And, I, and I've run across a lot of my friends and people that know me, man, they, and they tell me that, that, that I motivate them. And I say, man, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's a good thing, then, you know what I'm saying? Just to yeah, see man. you guys take care of your health and cut the weight down and, you know. Yeah, man. It's per and I said you're sitting at 264 now. You're not cutting weight in the last week, you know. So you're definitely keeping yourself healthy, and you definitely sound very focused. From what you've been talking to me about, you know, having to deal with things, you sound very focused now. And I'm sure it's going to be a very good evening for you. I'm personally looking forward to the fight. Um, it's things going to be a very, very good fight. But I'm speaking to I'm going to be speaking to your opponent as well. But it's very interesting to learn what I've learned about you, Mo, because. Now I'm sort of looking at you in a whole completely different light to what I've watched you in the last decade. Oh, <laughs> you know? cool, man. I appreciate you, man. Thanks. No, it's interesting. That's, 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 <coughs> excuse me. That's what's most interesting about chatting to you guys. It's like we've I've watched you, most of us have watched you your whole lives, you know, and it's you talk to you guys and it's it just puts everything into perspective, you know. It's you're normal people, you know, and you do have your normal struggles outside the cage or the ring <laughs> as well as in you know, as well as inside. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. That's it. I tell you what's cool though, with my I mean, like without saying like a like a giddy little schoolboy thing, it must be cool that you're fighting for someone like under Ken Shamrock, a name like that. Oh yeah, I remember Ken Shamrock way back in the days, in my early days, two thousand, when um, when he used to come to uh, to the Shark Tank, uh, one of the gyms uh, way back then that I used to go to, um, and he used to come train there. I met him a couple of times. With him and chemo and all the old school guys. Man, those guys were beasts as well back in the day, chemo and Shamrock. Yeah. Yeah, man. That must have been pretty cool, though. And obviously, Hall of Famer in the UFC. He's done it all. He's done, even gone to WWF, the guy, you know? And then he's yeah. still fighting in the cage. It's incredible what he's done. So, yeah. And, um,. How well? How how does it feel? You know, fighting in their debut event. You know, their 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 first ever event they're putting on. It's having so much interest already. Like looking like I'm calling you all the way from the United Kingdom. It shows you how far this is spreading, and you haven't even had an event yet. Oh yeah, yeah I was surprised. Um, it's uh, it's an honor, and but you know, just for me to compete at at a uh, in great shape and to represent this organization is. Uh, 
uh, an honor for me. Um, I mean, you know, I, I'm a fighter. I just want to go in there and represent who I am <laughs> in a real way. That's it. And um, you got you got lots of support for you going 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 along with this as well. Oh yes, I got people in my city and family, you know, close family members, and I'll, I'll have my brother and my coach um, Joji from Ikusa Dojo, and and two of my young uh, two of my younger boys there uh, with me. Have they any of the have your boys younger boys ever seen you fight before? Oh yeah, they have all seen me fight. They always watch my videos. No, but have they ever gone to the arena to see you fight before? Oh yeah, at, at a venue. Uh, yes. My, my two younger ones that will be there. This will be their first time. I actually Oof. got three. Out. My, my bad. I got my oldest, the one that's competing now, he'll be there. Well, that's nice then, mate. You're gonna have all the family there. And it's going to be a nice moment, you know, when you win. So, no, no, oh, I look yeah. forward to it. Yeah, man, it's going to be great. And, um, again, another great opportunity comes your way. So, yeah, man. Yes. Grab it with both hands. I'll tell you what, though, uh, Mo, I know you're sitting at the gym at the moment, and I will let you get on to training. But before I let you go, um, I just want to ask the question, which I know a lot of people will. Obviously, your real name isn't Mighty Mo. So, um, what, no. what's the what's the backstory on Mighty Mo? Oh, uh, well, no, Mo, Mo is something I've always uh, went by ever since I was a youngin'. But my, my, I have a first name. I'm, I'm a junior named after my dad. But Mo is, I'm, Mo was only when I had to go to school and the teacher would call my name. They'll call Ciala. Ciala is my first name. That's my dad's, uh, I'm, I'm a junior after my dad. But Mo, yeah. has been, Mo has been my name ever since I was, I can remember. And uh, going into the fight game. Uh, uh, Mighty Mo came from from a lot of things. Uh, for me, being a dominant American football player, my defensive line coach gave me that, and uh, a lot of the things I did in my life that normal people wouldn't go to, and it was like I can't believe you made it, <laughs> you know. So, but it was mainly because my 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 defensive line coach gave me that name. Because I would, I would just rip through that D line, defense alignment like nothing. And if you know anything about American football, those guys are three fifty plus. Everybody yeah, in that line. And uh, I'm a two ninety pound defense alignment, six two, six one and a half, uh, just crushing through there. I know, man. It's actually probably a safer sport, bare knuckle boxing, than going head on with these guys. Well, I honestly say you could actually break your neck, break your, tear your kneecap out, uh, or back in football. I mean, fighting is brutal, but you get cut here and there or concussion. But football is very – you get major concussions in football too. Major. I would, yeah. I always wanted to have a go at American football because, I mean, in England I played rugby myself. And, oh yeah. Um, yeah, you should have a go at that one day, Mo. I think I reckon you'd be brutal at rugby. Oh, oh, I was. I played rugby before. <laughs> oh, I you really did. Loved, yeah, I was a prop. I really oh, loved. so was I, mate. I was a prop as well, second row. Me too, man. Yeah, I like I like rugby. Rugby, rugby was fun. But which one that. did? Which one did you find more? Um, I want to hear from the Americans' point of view. Um, which which one did you find was more brutal? Like more, more like I don't know, brutal. More like hard work and more enduring. Oh man, uh, American football by far. It's, oh. It's, uh, <laughs> oh man, I'm for real. I'm for real. American football, they, they deal with a lot of angles, attacking in angles. So your vision's got to be sharp, like real sharp, because a guy that could be standing right beside you could rip your kneecap the other way. If you ain't smart. Yeah, because the difference between obviously American football and rugby is rugby you can only pass backwards and you can't do off the tackle, off ball tackles. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and there's a certain range where you got to, you can't just come from the side and, and tackle somebody. You got to sort of give them a certain uh, distance before you yeah. make. Yeah. 
it's more safer. <laughs> yeah, but well, I, I, it was more funner to me. I, 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 rugby, I, I, I like rugby. Yeah, rugby is good for I get to run the ball. <laughs> yeah, just give just give you the ball. And we'll just we'll just go behind you and just uh, make a ruck uh, and just push. I was I was a fullback slash running back in high school. So yeah, yeah, and I was known as a juggernaut when I when I when as soon as they give me the ball, I'm I'm crushing through anybody. Yeah, and that's just three hundred pounds of speed and actually, muscle. Actually, I was only two thirty. Oh, okay. Two twenty, two twenty five, two thirty. But I, I was a I could I could run and hit hard. It's a beat. Yeah, I bet you're a big guy, big guy as well. I was just man. I was just built. You know, I was, I was able to run and hit hard. That's it. And I, I, helmet to helmet. Oh, brutal, man. That can't feel good. Yeah, man. Well, fair props to you. You obviously know how to take a shot then if you need to. <laughs> so I'm sure you're not worried about pushing the fight forward and putting on the pressure. Oh, good. All right, I'll tell you what, um, also before I let you go, do you want to give a shout out if you haven't already to any of your training partners, coaches, you know, sponsors, anything like that before I let you go? Yeah, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to, uh, to uh, my coach, uh, Joji from Martial Arts Ikuza Dojo in San Bernardino, California, <laughs> and uh, my sparring partners, Brandon and Sinao. Uh, these guys have been helping me out to uh, get my time in and um, target right. I appreciate you guys. And also to uh, uh, my wife and kids uh, for giving me the strength uh, to keep pushing forward. Sit, mate. All all starts... Sorry, man. I was going to say it all starts at home, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Of course, man. That's, uh, that's, that's where it all starts from. Yeah, man. Well, I tell you what, Mo, it's been an honour to speak to you. Again, someone I've watched for a while and it's been really, really honoured to speak to yourself and I honestly can't wait to see you fight again. I love that you're still fighting. I love that you're feeling stronger and better than ever and I can't wait to, I can't wait to see you have that fight in, um, in Valor, man. It's going, to be, it's going to be incredible and see what you do after that as well. I appreciate you, bro. No worries. Well, have a good, have a good session and um, it'll be good to catch up again after your fight. Anytime, brother. All right. Take care. Cool. Mo, you still there? Yeah. Hi, man. Just want to say, um, before I let you go, obviously it's the recording's off now. Um, was that okay? Everything all right with that? Yeah, yeah. With uh, with, with the interview? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was cool, bro. Whatever you need, man. I, I'm, I'm whatever, man. As long as it, it works for you guys, I'm good. Of course, mate. Yeah, I just didn't want to keep you for too long. That's all. Because I knew you had to train. Okay, no worries. Whenever you want to call, just send me a text and let me know if you uh, yeah, mate. Alright. Um, Alright. Cool. And as soon as um, the video, as soon as the interview's out, because we're interviewing about six of the fighters and we've interviewed Ken Shamrock, we're going to put it out as one long show. So once it's out, I'll send you the link and you can have a listen to it with the family or whatever. Okay? I appreciate, I appreciate you, brother. Cool. Have a good training session, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye, mate. Bye. Hello, my name's Chris Allen and this is the Martial Arts Chat Podcast. Today, I'm being joined by a veteran of the martial arts world. He's done it all, he's fought everywhere and now he's taking, and now he's coming back to the US to fight in Ken Shamrock's new Valor Bare Knuckle Fighting. It's one and only Mike the Marine Richmond. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic, man. Uh, thanks for having me. No, I really appreciate you taking the time out your busy schedule. There's um, quite exciting times coming up for you at the moment, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, definitely some exciting times, especially, uh, you know, with this new promotion uh, making their debut. They look like they're kind of, uh, you know, making this a big thing, you know, a big type of event. You know, their first event's going to have that direct TV dish network, that big, you know, that big cable satellite, you know, I should say that big satellite pay-per-view type of viewership, yeah. not only their internet viewership, but they have that. They have that satellite TV viewership, which is huge, I think. Um, so, you know, they're kind of all in on this promotion. So I'm kind of pretty excited about that. How does it feel? Um, in, in my eyes, as a, as a fan of the sport, Ken Shamrock's a legend to me. In my eyes, iconic to the sport. How does it feel fighting for something, um, going on to an organization which is run by himself, especially someone who's been in the cage and done the experience, experience, sorry, experienced it all himself? 
Yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty badass. You know, you have a legend like him that's getting into the bare knuckle fighting, the bare knuckle boxing scene. I mean, he did fucking you know, sorry for swearing. He did. Uh, that's what. Yeah, he did. Uh, you know, bare, I mean, he was he was fighting bare knuckle in the UFC, and bare knuckle MMA. You know, so uh, you know him getting into this and 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 being all about it is a pretty cool thing. And also to work under someone like him, great, must be fantastic. Um, gives you the opportunity to carry on a career. It's um. Because obviously you started, after you finished your MMA, you went to um, BKB in the, um, mm-hmm. in the in the land I'm talking to you from now, in the UK. Yep. Um, first of all, I want to ask you the question probably everyone's ever probably asked you a million times. What made you decide to take the gloves off and just keep it stand-up, opposed to full MMA? Um, you know, I've always been a fan of boxing. I, I really enjoyed boxing. Like I said, I have two pro boxing belts as well. My my MMA style is kind of based on stand up and I'm just always the most comfortable standing and in, in exchanging punches. And I'm just was super intrigued about the whole bare knuckle thing. I just uh I love the aspect of bare knuckle. I mean, you it, it, you got to play the style of bare knuckle is different than mm-hmm. boxing. You can't have a you can't have a big high punch count. Uh, I mean, if you, you punch the wrong area, you punch your elbow wrong, you punch something wrong, you're messing up your hand. You got to have a little bit more sniper, precise style, punching style. And I think that kind of fits into my style of striking as well, my style of punching. And uh, it's just, I, I don't know, that type of that type of like pugilist combat, you know, yeah. that gentleman's, pu- gentleman's pugilism. Uh, I just, I, the, 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 I love it. You know, I just knew, I knew my style. I knew my mindset. I knew I would, uh, be able to, to go into it very comfortably. I know the guys over there with BKB, you know, they're always like, Oh, you know, you really don't know. You really don't know if you can handle bare knuckle to your hand. You know, we always, you know, MMA fighters coming in, blah, blah, blah. But I do say, I think a lot of MMA fighters can transition to bare knuckle easily because they're, they're used to throwing with little tiny little gloves on. So I think, I think they have a good transition. I mean, I'm not saying boxers don't won't have a good transition when we're starting to see more and more of them do that. But yeah. um, I think that helps them with the smaller gloves transitioning to, to bare knuckle. Now, as you said, because bare knuckle isn't just your standard boxing rules as such. People might say you knock someone down, they get like a potential 10 count, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot more to it, like, because um, just explain to everyone out there, you might not understand, you can actually clinch your opponent, can't you, as in stand clinching and dirty boxing for three seconds, is it, the rule? Uh, well, I know, see, I, you know, I'm still unsure how Valor bare knuckle is going to operate, if they're going to be more of the American style, how bare knuckle fighting championship is, where they allow, like, I don't know if they, they allow just continued clinching and clinching until they just stop the punching, where uh, BKB... Uh, over there in the UK, they were more, it was much more like traditional. It's essentially boxing without gloves on. So they didn't really allow much dirty boxing. They, you know, they might let a punch or two slip. And then I was like, hey, hey, hey you know, kind of like you wouldn't allow it in an actual uh, glove match. So uh, I'm not sure which way the valor is going to go but i mean i'm i'm comfortable with both with both both styles whether the clinching dirty boxing style or just you know your traditional gloved style boxing well you would have trained dirty boxing quite a lot anyway for your ma career no for sure yeah so do you reckon that helps a lot being is that something as an ma fighter you can really take into um, the sport if they allow that rule yeah, I think I, I definitely can take in the sport. I mean, utilizing the clinch, but also kind of getting out of the clinch, staying away from the clinch. I mean, I didn't really throw. I would throw a couple of. I wasn't big into dirty boxing clinch style, but I knew how to do it if I needed to. So it's one of those things where the capabilities there. Um, I definitely like the more traditional style of just straight boxing, slipping, rolling. You know, staying in the pocket. Um, I, I do like that traditional style, but I definitely have the ability with the MMA experience of grappling, clinching and all that to dirty box as well. So did you actually ask to like be involved in this in BKB or was it something? It was something yeah, you yeah. To do? I did remember, you ask to do it or do they approach you? Uh, you know, I hit them up because I saw it and I was, I told them I was interested. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had communications with Jim uh, for a little bit. And he was like, all right, cool. And I knew I was still kind of dealing with, you know, my MMA stuff. 
And then he finally got a hold of me. He's like, "Hey, you still interested in, in doing this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely, 100. I am. You know, I wanted I wanted to get on. I saw they were doing big things over there. It was word that it was going to start happening over here. You know, I wanted to be a part of that. I didn't want to miss my opportunity um, to really get into this scene and, and and make a name for myself in the scene. You know, while I still have some years of good competitive fighting left in me. So he hit me up, and." Uh, you know, then they scheduled the we scheduled the match, and then we made it. And we made it happen. I was originally supposed to fight Cody McKenzie, that fell through, and then I ended up fighting that Marcus Gaines, and um, I fought him at 185 pounds. Now they do it a little differently. They do kind of like a day of weigh-ins. Yeah. They don't do uh, so. I fought at 185 day of. And like I didn't really cut any weight. It was fantastic. I actually enjoyed it. I felt confident being bigger and not having to worry about cutting water weight. 185. Um, just sorry to yeah, interrupt yeah, you. Yeah. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. You fought at 135 before, haven't I, you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't check that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but here, you know, this would be your traditional boxing or MMA, you know, day before weigh-in type of deal. So I'm gonna drop down to 175 for that. I do enjoy being bigger. I my days of cutting down to 45 and 35 are definitely done. 45 is definitely done. Even 50, even. 55 I, I might not even consider going jumping going back down to that i mean maybe um i enjoy being kind of like bigger thicker now you know being 34 years old uh my days of cutting the big the big way cuts are kind of over um so we'll see yeah but well, i'm glad you didn't cut too much weight in that last fight because your opponents your opponent you fought has actually fought a 205 before yeah, well. yeah 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 he fought and- a light heavyweight yeah yeah, so I'm looking at you on the on the when you um, were squared off, and I'm thinking, blimey, I, was, I wasn't <laughs> thinking he's going to dominate. I thought he's got the reach advantage like anything in a bare knuckle fight. But mm-hmm. you did really well to get on the inside, you know, land that uppercut because he kept leaning forward with his punches quite a lot. And um, yeah. I saw you were catching him with the uppercut. And one thing that wasn't pointed out enough was those body shots were, oh, they were savage. They were landing. He wasn't liking them, was he? No, 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 not at all. Yeah, he, uh, I, I definitely. I definitely was picking up that he wasn't utilizing his reach good enough. Um, you know, he was still unsure of how I was going to approach the fight. I think he probably thought I would be on my on my bike and kind of moving, 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 which is never really my style. I kind of like to sit inside the pocket, stay within range, slip counter, slip counter, approach, approach, you know, kind of press, press. Um, and I think that kind of threw him off that. Because I'm, I'm sure he saw me, you know, he knows that I fought at Bantamweight, so he's like, this little fucking guy isn't going to be fucking getting in, you know, getting up in my face, which I, I was, I was really comfortable to go in there and, and, and just let it, and let it fly, because I just knew my skill set, I knew, I knew the size wouldn't really matter, unless he just has some dynamite punching power that I wasn't aware of, you know, I, I knew, I knew my, my size wasn't going to be that big of a disadvantage, yeah, man. And you dropped him three times, obviously, in the, th- in the second round. Referee stopped the fight. Um, so, yeah, you must be thinking to yourself, what are you thinking going through your head then? Are you thinking, oh, I've had my... So I've finally done what I wanted to do. I wanted to try this bare-knuckle fighting out. Mm-hmm. I've got in against a guy who's, who's been changed last minute. He's massive. He's fought a light heavyweight. What were you thinking after you won that fight, apart from the fact, obviously, fantastic? Like, what was... Were you thinking, what's next? Or, right, this is what I want to do going forward? Yeah, yeah. I was, like, I was super amped up. I'm like, hell yeah. Like, I wanted to be a part of... You know, I wanted to be a part of their little movement they had going. I, w- I was excited to get back in there. I wanted to keep, you know, going after, start going after their quality talent you know, and just keep fighting in the bare knuckles scene. And then it was just kind of like I kind of got pushed back and pushed back. And it wasn't really, to me, it didn't seem like I wasn't that much of a priority. And I understand, like, I understand it costs a lot of money to, to fly over an American fighter. And then you got to pay for the American fighters, corner man, you all their stay. Like it costs a lot yeah. of money, especially if you don't have that big financial backing. I'm not saying they don't, but it, it didn't seem, it, I just felt like, you know, I was, a, I felt like I was a good, a good product for them to, to put out there. But I don't mean, maybe they didn't see it that way or it, it was just kind of like a, it seemed like a one and done type of thing, and then I got offered a fight against Barry Jones after a year. Like it's been, it would have been rolled up on a year of me not fighting for them, and then there was like, all right, we're gonna get you November. All right, we're gonna get you next week. And then, then I got to the point where I'm like, all right, these dudes are never gonna, like, these never dude are gonna never sign me a fight. So it's like, and I'm a manager of a 
the biggest chain. I'm a manager of a strip club, the Spearman Rhino Gentleman's Club in Pittsburgh. Like, I'm a busy schedule. Like, I can't be grinding and training all day, every day long, waiting for that fight opportunity. So I like to lift weights, and I like to uh, I like to do those type of things. So I, I got big, and I got, like, up to, like, 210 pounds. Wow. 210 plus pounds, and and then they offer me the Barry Jones fight at like 168 pounds with like four and a half weeks. I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't fucking drop. I can't drop down to 168 pounds at that time. So then it turned into, Oh, see, we offered you a fight. You didn't take it. It was kind of one of those moves where I'm like, really? Yeah. Like, Oh, it was, it was one of those, like you offered me a fight, but I turned it down. Like, all right, well let's, let's, you could have been like, all right, let's meet at 185. Let's meet at 190. You know, I might take a short notice fight like that, but I'm not going to spend four and a half, five weeks trying to lose all that weight. That's what I'll be focused on is losing weight instead of really fighting. And Barry Jones, he's a tough fucking, you know, he's a tough dude. He's a, he's a quality opponent. It was just, I just wish, I wish I would have got, you know, your traditional eight weeks. And I was a fill-in guy. So, like, I wasn't even the first choice. It, I, I, I was the American, like, oh, shit, we need an opponent. His guy dropped off. I asked Mike Richmond. And it just it just didn't work out. I'm like, dude, I'm like I'm over two hundred and ten pounds right now. Oh, okay. And then and then when I had a little you know, getting frustrated with him not booking me, um, then we kinda had a little spat. And then it was just, you know, I have nothing but respect for the guys. I what they're doing out there is fantastic. And uh but it just I just wasn't a I just wasn't a part of their cards as far as moving forward. Yeah, and what you said, it could be because of obviously the long distance traveling and everything like that as well. <clears throat> Smaller organization. But right. again, look at someone, um, this is no disrespect to them either, but one of their biggest names was Mark Godbeer, you know, at the organization. Mm -hmm. um, for, and now he's joining you at the same organization as well. Right, yeah, for sure. So, again, I, he, he, Mark fought with them, you know, again, several months ago. And uh, now he's over here. So it's like, uh, you know, those things happen. You know, I just figured. The, the the disappointing part of me back to the original question was after after finishing Marcus and feeling super comfortable in there. I know he had a you know a very you know nearly 500. I don't know below 500 or above 500 MMA record. So like oh yeah well he, he was a shitty MMA fighter. It's like okay yeah I understand that. But like I fought a dude who fought at 205 185. I fought at bantamweight. I went in there comfortably, not even blinking an eye, batting an eye. Like whatever, let's let's throw it down. I just uh, I was jacked up to be like all right I'm gonna be fighting bare knuckle every five months. Like I'm gonna be part of this freaking thing out here. I hope I can fight for one of their titles. You know I can make a make a name. And it just really didn't happen. And I waited and waited because I still want to do mixed martial arts. I mean, after coming back, um, my first featherweight back fight with MMA, you know, that was a disappointing time in my career. I was in a shitty spot. I was cutting way too much weight. I just, those fights for, the, the second LFA fight, I, I got robbed. I did. The first one at 45, it just was a shitty time. I fought a, a, a great opponent and I cut way too much weight and I mentally just wasn't in the game. So like, I wanted to stay in MMA and do bare knuckle, but then I was so jacked up about the bare knuckle scene that I'm like, all right, let, for, let's keep, and then I was like, all right, man, we'll get you on the next card. Oh, sorry, we'll get you on the next card. So then I didn't book any MMA fights. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And then I just kind of just wasted a year of competition. Like I didn't, I didn't fight for anybody for a year, and that was kind of really frustrating thing for me. But whatever. Well, yeah, because obviously you're a guy who likes to keep active as such. And you know what? When you're in the MMA world, as many people would debate it, you did dominate that world because you had eight. You look at your career, man. Eighteen wins, sixteen of them were finishes. You know what I mean? First of all, that's something not a lot of people can say. You know, fifteen of those sixteen were first round stoppages. You know, and you were never submitted yeah. in a game no, where no. you were a great stand-up fighter, but you were never submitted. So yeah, it just goes to show. So that's definitely, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I you've fought, definitely left your mark in the MMA world. Yeah, I fought a definitely a, a lot of good. I mean, I fought a handful of black belts, fought a lot of tough dudes, a, a lot of tough quality opponents, and you know there was a hope that I was going to get back into the scene. You know, stringing some wins, get my mind right, get my life kind of in order, get the weight resituated find a good comfortable weight class i would you know either go try to try to rally back to bellator for one more run or see if i can get to the ufc do you know one more run and just kind of the whole waiting on bkb see if they're gonna still like it was just kind of like you know in hindsight i should have just kind of been like all right cool 
I'll just fo- refocus on MMA. If they ask me for a fight, they ask me for a fight. But like you said, it was one of those things. After the fight, I'm like, oh fuck yeah, this is it. Like I, I'm gonna be one of the a Baron. I can be one of these Baron knuckle stars. I'm just I, I feel comfortable in here. I feel so comfortable. Like I feel this is my style of fighting. Like I was born and bred to fight like this. Uh, it just didn't it didn't play out that way. So it, it is what it is. I'm I'm not mad about it now. So fair enough. No, fair enough, man. It's good stuff. And what what I was interested in is um, we all know the other I don't want to talk about too much the obviously the other bare knuckle fighting organization BKFC which is obviously very popular as well at the moment yeah. in the states. Did they approach you at all? Is that something you're interested in? Like, don't get me wrong, Ken Shamrock. I, I I think both companies going to be are just are gonna be just as fantastic as each other. But uh, I actually believe. Do you believe is it the Ken Shamrock thing or what was it? Uh, well, I mean, I know a lot of. Uh... It was the BKFC did. I was kind of in touch with them a little bit, but then originally, originally Sean Wheelock was a, he's one of the commentators. He was an old Bellator commentator. I know Sean Wheelock's an amazing guy, and he's commentates for BKFC. So he kind of originally put in a word to David Feldman and when they were getting started, like, "Hey, this is one of the guys you should sign. He's perfect for this styles of fighting. He's perfect for this." Well, then I already ended up signing with BKB. So then David was like, all right, well, he's already signed to the, the UK promotion. Like, I can't I can't go after him now. So then I was signed for a year with them. And then when I got out, I was kind of in contact, which I thought I was in contact with David. I thought he ran the Instagram account, but it wasn't. Apparently, it was some guy who doesn't even work for him anymore. Then I kind of talked with Sean, and then he re-talked with – he kind of reached out to David again. And then with the funny part is right when I was in contact with Valor BK – um, and I was getting ready to post about that. Then I got a message from David, like, "Hey, so you still interested in, you still interested in in fighting for BKFC?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, I am." But now, like, it was kind of one of those things where there's some Bellator guy, there's some Bellator guys that are working with Valor BK, and I and I like him and I know him, and I was kind of like, almost kind of gave him my word, like, "Hey, I'm interested." And it, 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 interested in fighting for their organization and it wasn't something where i'm like oh shit bkfc is calling me now all right fuck you guys uh you know i was kind of like you know i'm committed to seeing where this thing goes with you guys um and it's it wasn't so much a it was it honestly wasn't so much a ken shamrock thing it was uh you know one of the guys who still works with bellator and you know i think he's helping with the valor bk i was talking with him and he's one of my guys i like to do it a lot and I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm all, I'm all about that. So uh, then I heard that, you know, they were, they were kind of really kind of pushing. I like the whole, I love the whole Dish Network Direct TV thing. I, I think that, I think that pay per view landscape is still, is still good. I mean, it's not been completely taken over yet by all the streaming and whatnot, but yeah. So that was exciting. And then the Ken Shamrock was just an extra element on top of it, like him, he, you know, him putting together a promotion. So. No, it was a no, number of things. Yeah, man, and it's great. You know, I've spoken to um, I've spoken to someone else who's fighting that evening as well with you guys, um, that S S Esteban Payan as well. And yeah, you, know, you you both sound very pumped, ready to get into this sport and get into this um organization. And hey, why not? You know, you're you're fighting all over the place. You know, and right. is there anywhere is there anywhere in particular you felt you like out of all the organizations you've worked for? I know you haven't worked for Valor yet, obviously, but out of all the organizations, is there anyone in particular which you felt you'd learned the most from or, you know, benefited the most from? Like including MMA? And yeah, everything? Including, including everything. Yeah, yeah. I think, obviously, Bellator MMA. I mean, I fought for them 12 times, and and they were all big fights. You know, they were all... They were all TV fights, so, you know, they were all... That was a huge, that was a huge experience for me, you know, was that high-level... The, the production and TV, the aspect, that whole high-level promotion aspect of it was, I think it was probably the most overall learning, you know, understanding the game and the fight business and all of that, just kind of being comfortable with it all, the whole process and whatnot. I think that, would have been, I mean, that was definitely still the most valuable, uh, no, look, you know, the most valuable. Yeah, look how well, look, look at Bellator now as well. Yeah, look, I mean, I well thought... Three fights under the Scott. Three of the twelve fights are under the Scott Coker era. So like, and now that he's taking it to you know even another whole level. So, yeah, I mean, good for them. That that's awesome. 
No, but it's good. But you, you say you're almost like you could say you're one of the veterans of um, Bellator. You know, not many people can say they've had twelve fights in such a large organization. Yeah. You know, so and, and I said you were on the featherweight tournament as well and all that sort of stuff. So you know, you've had some great experiences um, with all these different organizations. And and how long have you been going for now? You think your first pro fight was back? I think I'm reading it, two thousand eight. Is that correct? Yeah, my first professional MMA fight was two thousand eight. I got out. I want to say April 2008. I, and it was that one of those right. things. It is April. <laughs> I got out of the Marine Corps January of 2008. I was just like one of the Marine, one of the main reasons I got out. I wanted to pursue the MMA thing, and I was like, I want to get out, find a gym. I want to train. Like I want to get into fighting. And I, look, in hindsight, looking back, I'm like, holy shit! Like I've got out in the Marine Corps in January, and I fought my first pro debut was in April. I'm like, the beginning of my career could have been a desert. It could have been a disaster. Like looking back, I'm like, I didn't. There were so many things I didn't even know. It was one those things where i mean it just kind of worked out thankfully you know i didn't you know matching was good and in, in all that and it was kind of helped, helped built up a good way but even still i mean i i didn't take any amateur fights i didn't have a big huge background in really any aspect of fighting i you know grew up boxing i wrestled but i wasn't i wasn't a collegiate wrestler i wasn't you know nothing like that i got out of high school and joined the marine corps so it was like uh and then i got out of the marine corps and i just wanted to fight you know i thought i thought i had what it took to do it so it was like get out let's find a gym all right let's find a promoter all right then i'm booking a fight and then next thing you know i'm fighting and you know several months later and then the you know my career just kind of started from there so we're going over 10 years Blow, man. what a great story though so what what was it that initially caught your eye to do combat sports like before everything I mean, even before you started boxing and stuff what was it that you thought did you see ufc or something on the like, early days of ufc or pride or something like that honestly i was a big boxing fan before mixed martial arts i, I was a huge boxing fan growing up um and then you know i then obviously a mixed martial arts came out you know, even even when it first came out in '93, I mean, I wasn't really watching it in '93. I was still super young. Um, I mean, we're talking about third grade, yeah. and you know, I want, I really, I mean, I remember going back and then watching old videos of the beginning UFCs. Um, but I was growing up, I mean, watching boxing, and then I love, I love the aspect of boxing. I wish, like. And looking back, I'm like, I wish I would have started boxing at a really young age. I wish I would have got into boxing early. And, I mean, I've had a handful of people in the boxing community be like, dude, you know, you kind of you missed your calling there. I'm like, yeah, it is what it is. Um, you know, I wish I would have kept boxing when I did start pro boxing. And I wish I would have got more fights and more experience. Um, but I do love uh, watching mixed martial arts. Once I, once that really started picking up and gaining steam, um I was probably in high school at that time when I was really getting into it. Like I'm like, oh, like I'm like I can do this. Like, and it wasn't like an arrogant like, like like every dude like I can fucking do that. It was more like I, I, I you know I believe I have I just my mindset I just that type of guy. And then it really kicked in in the Marine Corps. You know that just added that extra you know that attack that aggressive mindset. Um, and that was kind of one of the reasons I got out of the Marine Corps. I was going to re-enlist. I had my re-enlistment package. I was getting ready to stay in the Marine Corps. I was on my third deployment in Iraq, almost going to stay in, teetering about getting out. And and I told my platoon sergeant, uh, at the time his name was Staff Sergeant Blanco, he ended up retiring just recently, uh, first sergeant. Um and I remember telling him, I'm like, dude, I'm getting, I, you know, so I was a sergeant at the time. I'm like, I'm getting out. Uh, I'm gonna, I don't want to pursue fighting. I want to get into mixed martial arts. He's like, dude, you're fucking crazy. You're not getting out. I'm like, yeah, I am. I, I'm, I'm going to get out and try this. Like, I don't want to look back. and I don't want to be like 10 more years down the road, fucking drinking a beer, watching a, a UFC and be like, yeah, I could fucking do that. Like, I wanted to actually do it. I'm like, what's the worst case? Like, worst case scenario, I get out. I'm nowhere near as good as I think I could have accomplished. And I, you know, I go back to the Marine Corps. I, you know, I read, you know, I re, I re enlist and I ended up getting out. And that same platoon sergeant, he actually, I had him in my corner for a couple of my fights. Whenever I fought in California, he was there. Uh, he was still, he was in my corner for, um, 
my fight against Nam Fan in San Diego. And I remember, I remember when he was in McCoy, he's like, fucking, remember when you told me you were going to get out? And I remember when you told me you were going to get out and you are going to do MMA and I thought you were fucking crazy. You're like, dude, I'm so proud of you, man. You get out, you got out and you just like went after it in your dreams and you, and you, and you accomplished it. And I was like, yeah, that was pretty cool hearing that from him. So. Yeah. Especially with someone you've had so much respect for, for so long, you know? Right. Right. So, such a high stature in the army as well. You know, someone who's, been there, they, they were your second family. Now your second family are your guys in the gym. You know, like do you train mm-hmm. anywhere in particular? At all, any particular gym? Oh uh, well, my biggest, my big gym in uh, Minnesota was the academy. You know, under Greg Nelson, a lot of he's had a lot of names under him. You know, most notably he, you know, trained Brock Lesnar for all his fights. But you know, and then he had, you know, Sean Shirk. Was, yeah, you know the big the lightweight beast, champ for long the big shirt, the, muscle sh- the muscle shark shark you know, watch you that guy's circuit on youtube anyone by the way God, <laughs> scary. he's 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 the greatest guy ever too like you meet sean and he's just like the freaking coolest dude and now he's just in the business of buying houses and flipping houses he used his money and he invest in a business and he's like and he's doing great so like he had a plan and like he's he's a very successful businessman now and it's awesome to see that he's as nice as dude ever um, and then now out here, I just train at a boxing gym out here in Pittsburgh called Jack's Boxing. I think, uh, when, if I look to do MMA fights, I've been looking at some MMA gyms out here, but we'll see right now. I'm focused. Like I said, right now I'm really, I'm all in on the bare knuckle thing and hopefully they stay active. They keep me active and, it, and it's kind of, it, hopefully it plays out how I wanted it to play out before, you know, with the UK promotion where, you know, I'm in there. You know, I'm getting after it. I'm one of their guys. And I'm getting fights, and and I'm and I'm putting on good shows on on TV. So, well, the way the be- one way I think the best way to look at it is, bare knuckle fighting is only just really taking off properly. I'd say at the moment, especially in yeah. the states, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like when UFC took off properly. Everyone now talks about the Forrest Griffin fights with um, Stephen Bonner. Talks about Hoist Grace's of the world and things like that. Yeah, you're actually starting this sport really in that time. So, mm-hmm. you stick in this sport, you keep doing what you're doing. You're, you become one of the pioneers of the sport, and is that something you know would be you'd love to happen, love to happen and pursue? Yeah, you, I mean that's You've got the kind opportunity. of like you, that's kind of like my you know what I was saying before. Like I wanted to be a part of this big movement with the rise of it. You know, I wanted to be kind of like you said, one of the pioneers to take it to another level. And, you know, there's the old school classic underground pioneers that people talk about, like what whatever. Like I'm talking about, like the you take it to the mainstream, the mainstream level of pioneers. Like you know, I want to be a part of that movement. I want to be like. You know, I would love for people to be like, yeah, you know, the bare knuckle boxing, bare knuckle fighting scene, like Mike Richmond, he was a freaking beast. Like, you know, he, you know, he was the he was the champ. Like, I, I want, I, I absolutely want that. So, the foundations are there, fighting under a great name. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd be fantastic to see how well he does. You know, he really will. And I think just with the name and everything, as well as getting guys like yourself, ex Bedator, uh, Mark Godbeard coming over, as well as others, and mm-hmm. then so- soccer Jews, I think, is on it as well, isn't he? If I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah, he's in it as well. Tiger's was in it, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, big names still coming out, you know, and it's great to see that even after your MMA, MMA career, I'm not saying it's finished, you've found something you love, and it's good that we can still see you perform on TV, you know, which is great. Yeah, for sure. You, yeah, I think... You, sorry, Carol. No, I think, with the like you said, with the big names coming along, it's just going to make this sport grow and grow, you know, the, and it, it's going to be... I, I can't wait to see where it goes in the next couple of years, so... Love them. It's only getting bigger and bigger, you know, so we'll have to wait and see. Like, organizations signing Bigfoot Silver now, BKFC, did you know, and things like that. So it's yeah, only going to get bigger that. and bigger, you know, and that's what people want to see, and that's what's going to attract people. And I know so many people that are talking about this Valor thing already, you know, saying, oh, do you know about this Valor thing? And I was like, oh, funny you say that, actually, because I'm actually going to talk to a few of their guys. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, mate, so people know what's going on, and that's why right. we're doing this show, you know, we want to get when the word the- out there. Right, and the and the great thing about having these big former MMA stars and and you know, bringing these box, former boxy stars, you know, brings in people like oh, you know, they MMA former MMA guys or former boxing guys. Well, it brings eyes to the TV, and then you can help build, you can help build your homegrown bare knuckle stars, whoever you want to build, you know, and uh, obviously the UK 
you know, the BKB promotion is they're doing a good job. They kind of really kind of want to build their UK stars and they're doing their thing. I'm sure BKFC has the, you know, they got some of their stars that they have in mind that they're trying to build and they're obviously signing new quality talent. You know, they, they like, they like those UFC Bellator veterans as well, but I'm sure they have some homegrown purebred bare knuckle guys. They want to build up, um, you know, just brings eyes to the, to this new sport and it's just going to grow and grow. Yeah, man, we need different organizations, you know, to fight so more people can get in there. Like, MMA wouldn't be, if it was just UFC, it wouldn't be what it is. It's because you've got UFC, Cage Warriors, Bellator, even the smaller mm-hmm. fight cards like Ring of Combat, you've got CFFC, all these different ones, you know. And that's what yeah. makes this sport popular, because if it wasn't for those and those smaller cards, I'm not saying Bellator's small, people wouldn't get the opportunity to ever show no. what they're doing. So that's why it's important that all these different bare knuckle fighting things open up. And I think this is the third like officially legal, legit, you know, yeah. like legit, you know, thing. So Yeah, there was that know, one there was that one show that I guess was just a big you know, the big debacle where they didn't pay all their fighters. It's a shame that that happened. Um, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, it was a disaster. But um, these, this, this is, seems you know, like legit. They got legit people behind it. It's, it's, it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be one of those things where you look back and you'll be like, you're going to look at Jim and Joe over there in the, you know, in the UK with BKB, and you might look at David and you'll be like, all right, these are the guys that kind of freaking help bring this to the mainstream and get other promotions started. And it kind of, you know, you'll look back at those, you know, those guys as the guys that kind of, whether they, you know, have their little rivalry, which they do, um, it's, they help kind of, you know, rise other future promotions and future stars. So. That's what it is, man. That's what, and it's, it's it's great as well. You're you're getting into the sport with still plenty of time left in your career as well. It's yeah. you're, it's obvious you're not doing this, you know, as a last minute paycheck for a few fights, which is great. No, you know, and um, you're really showing. And I, I said I can't wait for this event. It's going to be so good. And um, yeah, again, I can't wait for this sport to keep growing. It is a big debate at the moment in the in the world if it should happen or shouldn't. But at the end of the day, it's being made legal. People are watching it. People are willing to fight on it. So I think they're going to have to get over it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be one of those things where one state at a time, you know, it's just like one commission is going to be like, all right, we're in. And then it was just kind of, I think more and more commissions will start, yeah. will we'll start, you know, getting involved and in, in, in allowing it to happen. So it's, it's going to happen. Banned. UFC was banned in 49 states when it first came right. out. Right, right, right. It's just, uh, it's going to happen. There's not, it's only it's just not, like, being it's made. going to happen. It's only just been made legal in France at the end of this year. Um, it's still illegal in Norway. You know what I mean? They've only just legalized boxing in Norway. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? So right. it just shows you. this is the, All sports are still growing. And it's good that it's in the UK as well. So it's already got a base for the European scene, which is good as well. Which opens up people like Valor and BKFC to actually come over to the UK and put performance on here. Is that right. you like? To, is that something? Like, would you like to come back here? Because I'm sure the fans oh, still remember I would, you. I would. I would definitely love to come back there. I would definitely love to put put a show on for the UK fans. You know, I was I got nothing but respect for them guys. I got nothing. The, the the fans showed class to me. I had a lot of people hit me up on the social media platforms, like, "Oh shit, great fight! That was awesome. Hope to see you back here." So like, I would love to go back there. So like, if they ever threw a show, you know, Valor goes over there. You know, if they ever start doing, you know, cross promotion, I don't know if they'll go the MMA route where like, oh, we can't let our fighters fight their fighters. You know, maybe they'll go the boxing route where, you know, we'll have cross promotion fights. You know, Valor guy faces BKB guy or Valor faces BKFC champ. You know, maybe there'll be something like that. Who knows? I'm not saying it can happen, but, you know, I just think, like you said, with these other promotions and it's you know a rising tide raises all ships it's just gonna be it's 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 better for everybody it's just gonna get it gets the visibility out everywhere more and more yeah, and i can't wait for it to keep growing and keep developing fighters like yourselves well you're a developed fighter but you know what i mean don't you right no, <laughs> so, so, yeah, i got you give, giving us the opportunity to keep watching your fights and watching you perform and as i said i'm sure if if MMA, you fancy doing that again, you go back to that. But for now, this looks like it's where you want to be. You seem very motivated, very positive about what you want to do. And, mate, good luck to you. I really, really hope you do well in this, and I'm sure you will. I appreciate it. And one thing I want to ask like, before, before I let you go is, um, you said you're a big boxing fan, yeah? Was yeah. There any, was there any particular boxer, and there, there is there is a reason for this question, is there um, a particular boxer you like to um, particularly watch growing up? Oh, man. 
I would have to say I have like a couple. Yeah. Um, but top if three I, or something. Top or three. <laughs> uh, it's so tough. Top three would have to be Prince Nassim Hamed. That's what I was waiting for. Uh, <laughs> a a Tur a Gaddy and um I would have to say probably Mike Tyson. Yeah, that's it. I was the reason, yeah. um, all fantastic. The reason I was waiting for you to say Prince Nassim is you like to sport the old leopard print, don't you? Oh I do I, I do. I love it. <laughs> so What was it? What we yeah, talk us through that. No, uh as far as I, I just love his style. I love that he was so unorthodox. He kinda brought his unorthodox style into um into boxing and he made it success like he would be a fucking outstanding bare knuckle fighter like in his prime like his sniper style of boxing his he you know he was he was definitely very patient and he was precise with his shots oh he would be a nasty bare knuckle fighter like he was a nasty fighter because he's just he was just he was so super entertaining yeah, you know, I love Prince Seam. was all from, well, but that's probably why, but as a, when I was younger, I was born, what, 87? And I can always remember seeing him on the TV flipping over the ropes and stuff. Yeah, know, that's fair. the cage. And, you know, he was representing the UK at the end of the day, wasn't he? So I, I just was. would just go on YouTube and I would watch his fights over and over again and his highlight videos and his movement. I mean, there's certain stuff, there's certain punches from the style that I even emulated. I try to like mimic those type of like that type of hip movement, type of explosion, <laughs> those type of uppercuts and hooks. Uh, I was, I don't know. I was just, a, I don't know what it was. I was just a big fan of his just fluidity, just everything about his style. It wasn't even really the arrogance. It was just, he was just so fluid and explosive. And he's just like his pound for pound, just such a little guy packing so much punch. It was just fucking great. Yeah. It's like when Amir Khan, the other UK prospect came on the scene, I thought he was quite similar and he was going to be like that, but unfortunately right. it didn't end as well. No, <laughs> so, no, it did not. No, unfortunately not. No, but uh, we got we got a few good guys coming through. Well, we thought we had Joshua coming through, but obviously after that incredible win from Louise, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's that, crazy. That, that fight's rescheduled again though in Saudi Arabia, I think. Now it's all going over there, Middle East now. Yeah, it's crazy. They had it out there coming in. I think if they're having it in December, but yeah. uh, it's a weird it's a weird place to have it. But I mean, I'm sure they offered a shit ton of money. Oh God, yeah, you know those. Um, mm -hmm. You yeah, know, the Saudi guys, princes and kings and yeah. all of them are, yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, they, they find a million dollars just sitting down the back of the couch, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Just... <laughs> I mean, you hear, I don't know if you're a big pro wrestling guy, I watch you here and there, I got a buddy of mine who's a diehard pro wrestling fan, but like the WWE will go to Saudi, or uh, they'll go to Saudi and like the money that they're paid, like, hey, we want a certain wrestler to come out here and wrestle for the show. Give him five million, like for one for one event. It's just like crazy. Yeah, that's madness, isn't it? You know, like, yeah. Oh. And, like and we want like, we yeah. want HBK to perform. Give him ten million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, but do you know what? I don't watch pro wrestling anymore. I used to watch it a lot when I was um, younger and stuff. And right. I, I flicked it on not that long ago. I'm thinking, they're still in this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. still fighting? Yeah, I was thinking, like, uh. when you see people like Triple H, I'm thinking, what happened to him? I thought, what happened to DX? Do you know what I mean? Like, you've, got, you've aged. Right. You know, and, there's, and there's and Ric Flair, I think. And I was thinking, oh, my God, what's going on? You're all still yeah. there. Rick, Ric Flair was old and I used to watch it back in like, the Royal Rumble 1990s. I know, he was, he was old back then, right. <laughs> so it's just, interesting to see that they just love the business they just love it I mean a lot of them get paid very very well I hope so if being thrown off a hell in a cell through a table like old Mick Foley used to <laughs> yeah, that was crazy <laughs> <laughs> you watch them yeah, it's funny it might be fake but the pain's not fake that way. no 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 I mean they're definitely entertainers they're definitely it's, it's definitely sports entertainment they definitely are they're putting their body through some strain no doubt yeah, don't get me wrong, you are as well, you know. But right, yeah, I definitely <laughs> am. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you don't look like you are when you come out your fights half the time. So that's no, the most right. important thing, you know. But right. even after your, back of bare, your, your last bare knuckle fight, I think he caught you once. I don't think he even left a mark, really, did he? So, um, you know, it's yeah, going funny, to your next fight. Sorry. Yeah, the, no, yeah, you're like, you, you mentioned that. It was like, I remember he caught me with his lead left to, he caught me with lead left to kind of like my brow area. And that was, and I, it was one of those moments. Where I was like, ah, oh, fucking so stupid. Why would I just keep my head there, waiting for him to punch me, like not slip? And then another part of me was like going through my brain really fast. I'm like, okay, I'm like that wasn't too bad. I'm like, oh, better not go. Then I remember the first time I landed clean on him with my fist. I'm like, okay, that's different. <laughs> like that's not an MMA glove. I'm like, all right, I can. I mean, I can handle this. Adrenaline's kicking in. I can let these hands rip. They're gonna be sore after this fight, but. <laughs> 
That was funny. <laughs> yeah, man, quality. I'll tell you what, man. That's it's been really good talking to you, you know, and I say I could talk to you for hours with a few beers and stuff, a few pints yeah, of beer. No shit. Next time I'm in England, man, we'll get get a few pints, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just want to give you the opportunity just to give a shout out to any, you know, anyone who's helped you to get to where you are, sponsors, people on social net um, social networks where they can watch all your stuff. Just let give everyone a shout, mate. I mean, as far as giving a, a shout to help me, like there's so many people I'd be here going going on for days and days from the beginning you know starting in 2008 so it's just i mean i definitely want to thank everyone that i've ever trained with all my coaches um and then as far as uh, social media you can find me i'm trying to even think about my my instagram handle is the marine richmond my twitter handle is mike usmc richmond uh got a facebook fan page i mean i don't use it as much as i should but you know hit me up on those social medias i, I try to i try to stay active i try to comment comment back on people that hit me up i do appreciate all the fan support for sure and um yeah man i just uh, i'm looking forward to this oh that's so we mate so we you, at the end of the day you started your career in this bare knuckle scene on home soil for me you know for us right. in the uk and um so we look forward to seeing you progress your career out there in the states and best of luck to you and again really really enjoyed talking to you and i hope we can talk again in the future yeah i appreciate it man thank you cool have a good evening mate yeah, you too. Bye. Hello, my name's Chris Allen, and this is the Martial Arts Chat Podcast. Today, I'm being joined by a brand new organization's fighter called Valor, owned by Ken Shamrock, the legend. He's um, opened up a new bare knuckle fighting competition, and we have such a veteran and legend himself in Estevan Payan. He's fought in multiple organizations, you know, fought some of the best fighters in the world, and I'm honored to be joined by him today. Estevan, thank you very much for joining us. What's going on? Just see what goes on today with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. Cool. What what sort of what what you've been up to recently? Ah, uh, no, just I have a typical life. You know, I run my gym, train people, then I do those side jobs on the side, and I have this, this fight coming up. But I think people don't realize like it doesn't matter when if I have a fight or not. I'm always training, you know, trying to learn new things. Like I say, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you can teach him better ones, better ways to do those tricks. <laughs> <laughs> and are you, are you? And do you feel like even though you know you've been you've been competing for such a long time, you're still actually learning new things? Uh yeah. The, I, the biggest change with me was when I started going to school. Like, I figured, you know, working out, it's there's a lot of science in working out. People just think, oh, well, you lift this way and this and. When I went back to school, I was like, oh, my God, like, who are showing me all this shit are idiots? Like, that they're doing it all wrong. Took a couple exercise science classes, some health and nutrition, and just like, man, I've been taught by a bunch of dummies. That's it. So, you just, as you said, just as you get older and wiser, as they say, but say you're still well in your, well in your fighting career. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So, would you say? Um, so, you're, so, you've got your own gyms now. Do you mind me asking what's the name of your gym? Oh, I just got the sign that says boxing and fitness. You know, I teach teach kids to work out, and like I've got a kid who's uh, he's got like an undeveloped arm, and then all of a sudden, like it's tripled in size, like his whole body's changing again. And I have another kid who's just skin and bone, same thing. He's all they're like the kids are all ripped up. Like they started school this this last week, and all these kids are trying to figure out how they got so ripped and muscular. <laughs> And it's, it's hard, but I, I'm not a believer in genetics and anything. I'm like, I, you can alter your genetics. Like, a lot of people tell them, say that I'm a genetic monster, that's why I'm all cut up. And it's like, no, I was a fat kid, <laughs> but I had this drive that kept telling me, you know what, I, I, you can do better, you can do better, keep training, keep working out, you know, just keep pushing yourself. It's a, that, that no quit attitude. And you Everyone find... likes listening to the naysayers, like the naysayer says, oh, well, you're, you're going to be fat. Well, okay, if you give into that, you're going to be. And do you think it's really important as well that, you know, kids are learning this at such a young age, like now while they're still sponges taking in everything? Well, you were, we're a sponge no matter what. It just sometimes it's just the mentality. You think like, okay, I know it all. But like I said, especially not only like the kids, like one of the kids I teach, his grandma actually got him to start training with me because his grandma started training with me first. And she's 67 years old. She's like 65 at the time. The lady came in hobbling in, barely walk. <laughs> she's got rheumatoid arthritis. And since she's been training with me, the lady's lost like 15 pant sizes. She, she can box now. And like I said, now her grandson is training with me too, and he's loving it. 
Uh, so it must be nice as well, like like seeing like all sort of families getting involved. And it's the first time I've actually spoke to a fire who had a, a 65 year old come in their gym and start training. Yeah. And they, it's usually get yeah, their parents or their brother, cousins. But no, this time he followed his grandmother. That's yeah, interesting. That's, an, grandmother. that's an interesting story in itself. Like, what was his grandmother? What was what was sort of thing she doing in the gym with you? Ah, uh, same thing. Always we we would cool, do man. four rounds on the mitts, like. Well, I let that. I have a warm up, you know. I mean, you gotta get the, that bone, the body moving, loosened up, so you don't pull anything or strain anything. And then, uh, then I start working minutes with her, and they do four rounds of minutes, and then, uh, then we lift for like 15, 15 minutes afterwards. No, and she, like the lady, she's like, her size, her size improved, her her overall health has improved. Like the doctors are like asking her what she's doing because. She doesn't need all this medication. And it's one of the things I learned in, in going to school, too, is the body is a self-healing organism, but we don't look for a freaking uh, – we, we just want that easy antidote that's going to make us forget about things instead of putting in the work to actually fix ourselves. Well, and that's what a mentality that everyone should have, and it's great, yep. that, it's great that people like yourself are trying to really push that message and as a teacher yourself. Well, that, that, that's the thing, too, with, the, with her, the, the grandson. The grandson had asthma. Like yeah. he'd been running, got really good at running, and I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, like he's good to run. And then like one day I'm like, okay, let's go on a run together. And I took him for a run, and freaking about uh, like halfway through the running, he started his asthma started killing him, and I was like, oh shit. He's like, what's wrong? I was like, I just realized I'm like, in your matrix, I'm like, yeah, you're the man. You can show up all the other little kids that that I train, but it's like in my matrix, I'm like, I'm the fucking man. And then, uh, but then I, I helped him improve his breathing because I figured out what was wrong, like why he was having problems with his breathing. And like the kid hasn't had his dues in inhaler in like months. He no longer even uses it. Oh, that's fantastic. And it must be great for you as well, like you said, with this vast knowledge of wealth, the vast, vast amount of wealth that you have, you've gained over such a period of time to be able to actually give back and physically see the, the actual differences you're making. Oh, yeah. Like I said, you, if you looked at these kids, like, they talk crap to each other like we, we well, like it's not it's not bullying or anything. We all just joke around, you know. It's locker room talk. Like you got America where they talk about oh bullying, bullying. I'm like, no, it's fucking kids bullshitting, talking crap, you know. Being kids, and that that's what I think. Like with me, like the kids, we like they'll talk crap with me, and I just talk it back. And they're like, dude, you're really good at talking crap. I was like, well, yeah. I was like, I got to deal with a lot of people on the internet. I was like, I can't. I was in the army, you know. I have dealt with <laughs> talking crap all the time. That's amazing. It's actually amazing just to hear that first part of your story. To be fair, you know, it's um, what you're giving back at such at the at this part of your career. And what's great about it is that you can you obviously feel like you're not working as well. I'm sure it doesn't feel like work, does it? Oh yeah, it's not really when I train kids. Like, it's not even work because I enjoy doing it. Like even sometimes, like I'll get done sparring, and <laughs> the kids are just like, "Are we sparring today?" I'm like, "All right, let's go." Like because like I don't let them spar each other. You know, the only person they're allowed to spar with is me. Yeah. Like and that's like tell everyone because the first few times I fought for like the first month that they spar, all they gotta do is try to hit me for four rounds. Just try to hit me. That's it. Follow me around trying to hit me. You know what I mean? And then after that, uh, I build it up to them. Then I'm gonna start hitting them to the belly a little bit. Like I'm gonna let them. You know, I'm not gonna break the ribs or anything, but I'm gonna show them what it's like to get hit. And then they start to catch that rhythm, and it's like, okay, now I'm gonna hit you in your head a little. Then they catch that rhythm, and then okay, now the punches get harder and harder. And the better they get, the more I improve. You know what I mean? Instead of just putting two kids, oh, well, they're the same level. They don't know what they're doing. I'm like, okay, they don't know what they're doing. But now they got this big error, of, error of a margin that he got because all oh, they can get away with this with this guy. But it's like, well, of course you get away with it. He's another dummy. And yeah. it basically turns into the blind leading the blind. And it's great that you you um, notice that straight away and you you sorry you identify that straight away in your guys that you're teaching at such a young age. And you, to be fair, and you've got to obviously make sure they understand that the reason you're you're saying you're only with me is to protect them. Is that correct from any injury? Oh well, it's just protecting them. And even even some of the kids, like I tell them, I just don't, I don't want them to get hurt. And at the same time, too, like one of the kids, like he goes to spar with his friend. I'm like, dude, don't be doing that. He's like, why not? I was like. Because then you hurt one of them, guess what? Your parents are getting sued, and you guys aren't rich. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, they, they gotta understand. Like, I tell them it's a game, but it's a game you play for keeps. Like, you know, you're trying to hurt each other. No, that's it. At the end of the day, and it's teaching them good discipline as well. At the end of the day, which is great. Um, well, that's the thing. Like with discipline, like, I teach help people discipline. Like, I don't, I'm not one of those fucking dicks. Like, all oh, about a sensei. I'm like, they call me Estevan. They don't call me fucking coach or whatever. I'm like, my name is Estevan. I don't fucking need to pound my chest, call me master or sensei. Like, 
my name's Stevan. That, that's it. You know what I mean? Like that. That most of those guys that that want all that shit. It's just it's an ego. Uh, I tell everybody I don't have a fucking ego. I, I fight because I like doing it, and I work with the kids because I enjoy working with them. Well, that's fair enough. I said you go. It's not. I said you obviously enjoy doing it. What you started? Oh yeah. You started fighting your pro career. What we're talking about now? Like well over ten years. It was like twelve years ago now, or something like that. So, <laughs> so it's, it's, I'm sure it's something you enjoy. <laughs> I said. Oh yeah. You, when was the last day you actually felt like you went to work? That's it, isn't it? Well, no, I fucking work the weekends. Like I have long weekends because I do security. And oh man, it's it's just a, it's a headache. It can be a headache sometimes in the security job. And yeah, but I, so I, I go to that security job and I work from freaking, I, I leave home at eight and then I work there till about four in the morning and I get home about five in the morning. Wow, man. Crazy. Well, you got to do what you got to do, haven't you? You've got fans, oh, yeah. support, things like that. So what, Monday to Friday, is it just solid training for you still then and running your own gym? Yeah, that's basically all I do. Like, And then I got to try and maintain you know, running. I got to maintain my weightlifting, my bag work. Oh, yes, everybody would call it my still beam work. <laughs> <laughs> Are you training at any other gyms at all, like, in regards to your upcoming uh, fight? You... No, like I said, a lot of people, like, out here in Arizona, a lot of people think I'm an asshole because, like, when we're sparring, I, I'm going to hurt you. I don't give a fuck. Like, if I'm getting ready for a fight, I'm trying to hurt you. You have hit you on because you need maximum protection, not because you're retarded. We wear bigger gloves because it's for fucking protection because you're, you're trying to hurt each other. You know what I mean? Like when you're getting for a yeah. raid for a fight, you're, you're you're fighting with the max protection you could have. Like you're not pulling punches, you're not doing all that bullshit. You're trying to hurt each other. Not exactly. There, you're not. You're not. You're there, you're there, you're there for one reason. One it's reason. It's like only. Hey, when when people play football. You know what I mean? They don't have the fucking guys playing on fucking Xbox. Okay, just go through the movements, learning what you got to do. No, those motherfuckers are hitting each other on the field. You know what I mean? No, that's it. You're in a contact sport, you know, at the end of the day. You know, but that's they don't get. But you see, like I said, just like the football players, they're on the field hitting each other, blasting each other, like, no, nope, not, not simulating, you know, they're, they're fucking learning about it. And then, like, that's the funny thing with, like, you got a lot of these MMA fighters, oh, well, football, power, football players aren't as tough as us. Like, no, those motherfuckers are just as tough. It's just they take other hits. Let me see you guys get hit by, you know what I mean? Like, you got to respect everybody's sport that, with the dangers in them, you know what I mean? No, Everybody just wants to be the baddest dude. I'll tell you what, though, you're definitely one bad dude. We know you don't feel pain. If anyone who follows um, Stevan's, if anyone follows Stevan's um, page on Facebook or anything like that, you can see um, he's got hands of steel. Isn't that right, Stevan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, everyone, everyone always thinks, like, oh, he's hurt. that's got to hurt. I'm like, no, nah. like, I don't feel it at all. Like, fuck, I, I figured it out. And it's like, I, tell I, I lock myself in the gym, and I just train, and I train, and I train. Like, like, I hate going to LA Fitness. I hate going to other places. Because it, it's just it's just like it's a Kool-Aid. You know what I mean? If you got this good old glass of Kool-Aid, just got the right amount of sugar and everything, and now you're surrounded by it, you just load water, put more and more water in it, and it, it just waters it down. Now, the same thing happens when you go to these other gyms. It's like they, they teach this shit, and then you start to see it. And then, like I said, that, that fucking amazing taste of that and the Kool-Aid is going to go away, and you're just going to get watered down with all the garbage you see. That I completely agree with you, mate. No, hundred percent. You said it right there. So, with going going back back to yourself with your fighting career, then um, obviously you started very early in life, and you started on you started uh, you fought in a lot of different organizations as well. Was there any particular organization <laughs> you enjoyed the most at all, or like you had the best experiences from? If you can pick one, uh, out of all I, I, I guess it was just <laughs> working with with Zufa. You know what I mean? Like, everyone talks crap about the UFC. I'm like, you know, what? like the UFC or it was Zufa at the time. You know what I mean? Like. They, they 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 took care of fighters like I fought for Strike Force that was it was already owned by by Zufa, the UFC yeah. owned them, and that was good. There was good pay, and then even with the UFC, good pay. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's all about the pay. Like if one organization I'm gonna say I didn't like, I'll go with fucking uh, when I did the first bare knuckle fight I did with that that BKFC. I did not like Feldman. He was just that guy's just a turd. And then the more I look at him, the more I don't like him. Like. Like, like, when he tries to talk, he's like, oh, the way we get down in BKFC, it's like, dude, you don't get down. Like, you're a fucking promoter, but you try to talk like you're this big bad dude. I'm like, okay, fucking, you're not that much older than me. Get in the ring, I'll fight you. Let's see how fucking bad you are. So that like, was when like, he, was talking, he was talking crap about the, uh, the, 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 the some guy fought out that, 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 the, the kid that just fought Bedford. 
Oh, and he was like, oh, the guy was running. He's like, we should take half his pay. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. You don't fight. Stop talking like you do it. So that was actually a question I was going to ask you. Um, obviously, I know you've had a bear knuckle, you had one of your bare fight knuckle fights in BKFC, which, as um, in regards to what, obviously, I'm not trying to disrespect what you're saying, but I'm going to say they are doing quite well. They seem to be getting popular. So I was, going to, I was wondering, um, you know, why did you make the change over to Valor? And I think you just answered my question. I, I guess the, the, the guy was a turd. Like, they, fuck, go go look at the their documentary. And I don't think they're doing that great. Like, and I don't think they're doing that great at all. Like, they had a free, they had it free on a what was it on, on YouTube? It had twenty four thousand views, and it was free. Their last show. And then I, I, I one of the things like like I said with Dave, it's just the way he is. Like, I I didn't like the guy at all. Like. First off, like I said that, that the first fight I did, he didn't really even pay me shit. And then the fuck, he's like, oh, yeah, we're going to start paying you when we start bringing money. And then he still, he was underpaying me when he was paying guys just to come in and lose. He was paying them more than he paid me. I'm like, yeah, dude, fuck this. But I'll tell you, so how did it come across then with Valor then? How did Valor come across? Like, how did they make, did they, did well, they I saw you? Valor and I was like, hey, I want to fight for you guys. And they fucking, oh, okay, well, our card's full. And then someone pulled out against Ishii Smith, and I'm like, they're like, hey, you want to fight him? And I was like, well, I know who he is. I, mean, I know he's a pro fighter, but that's like one thing people don't know. Like, I, that, that's all I do. Like, I'm a trainer, but I just, I'm online all day looking up fighters, looking up, like, everything. Like, fuck, I, I, I could give you, like, the rundown on Ishii Smith. Like, I tell everybody, if I'm, if I'm fighting you, I'm going to become obsessed with you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm your, your fucking stalker, like, and then fuck comes. Uh, then after the fight, I forget all about you. It's like okay, it's nice knowing you. It's just it's that one night stand. You know what I mean? Like you try everything to get it, and then you get it, and you're like, all right, nice to know you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were successful in your bare knuckle fight, weren't you? BKFC. Yeah. Oh yeah, I beat the shit out of that guy. Here, here, oh, oh, though, here, here's one of the things that pissed me off even more about Dave. Yeah. So my fight was supposed to be at 155. The morning of the fight. He calls me. Hey, he can't make 155. But uh, can, can you fight him at 158? I'm like, oh, fuck. I'll fight him at 158. I'm not going to show him beat the shit out of him. Then we get to the weigh-ins. 30 minutes before weigh-ins. Hey, Esteban, he can't make 158. Will you fight him at 165? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Did he even try to lose weight? You know what I mean? We were supposed to fight at 165, and now I'm fighting you at 165 when we were supposed to do 155. And then I was like, okay, well, I want his whole fucking purse. Oh, we can't do that. He's like, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. Don't worry. So I got, they gave me an extra thousand dollars. You know, or they were like, we'll take care of you if you put on a show. I beat the shit out of that guy in less than a round. I knocked him out fucking before the round, the first round even ended. So in two minutes, he got knocked out. Wouldn't get up. And they gave me a thousand dollars. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You know what I mean? Like, and I'm, I'm to me, I'm just like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's their first show. I'll let him do it. But then the second time he, uh, the, when the second show, they, they wanted me to come back and fight again, and he didn't really offer me anything more than what he already paid me. I'm like, dude, like you're you're paying fucking turds more than what you're paying me. I'm like, yeah, fuck that. Like the, the, this. Do you, I, I get a lot of broken bones. Like there's there's damage I could take, and then what? So just so dicks like you can talk about how bad you are. Yeah, it's, it's a shame though. To be fair, it's a shame it ended like it did with you at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. But at the end of the day, you found a new calling in Valor, and you oh, obviously. Yeah. Ha, and how how um how obviously have you spoken with Ken Shamrock as well and met him? Uh no, he just messaged me on Facebook. You know. I, I know who Ken is, you know, I thought like he's a pioneer. And that, that's another thing I, I enjoy of, of helping Ken, you know what I mean? You always see people talking about, oh, fighters, like, they get fucked over. And it's like, oh, okay, well, you know what, here's a pioneer of the sport who's helped build it. Now you guys can all help him by making his organization great, you know what I mean? By following his organization, not following Dave Feldman, some fucking dick who fucking claims all this shit. Like, oh, yeah, like, I'm the first person in the history of the world for bare knuckles. I'm like, dude, bare knuckles been going on for fucking years in the UK. You know what I mean? Like talking about all the the history of the world, we're the first to legalize. And like, dude, I can't stand that prick. <laughs> like, I fuck. I wish he would try to fucking. He since he says, like I say, he, he's a bad dude. Fucking all how they get down in BKFC. Like, 
Well, okay, well, we'll, we'll fight. I'll fight you in your fucking own show then. Do, do you feel because like Ken Shamrock's had that career? You know, he's had that fight. Ken Shamrock's career. had a career. The guy, he's helped fucking build MMA. You know what I mean? He was one of the faces of MMA to start and keep pushing it and pushing it. And like I said, it's it's the best thing anyone could do. Like, like if I, I've had trainers that would talk shit about Ken, and I'm like, you know what? I respect Ken. You know, the guy fucking, people were talking about how he's too old. And like I said, no, he wasn't too old. He just fought, it, you, you don't fucking stop till you want to stop. Fuck what the naysayers say. It's your life. You only have one of them, so live it. That's it, man. I and um, I said it's it's good to see you found somewhere else. You know where you feel like you compete and you feel like you're going to enjoy it more. You know you're going to get on better with the owners and have a, a slightly a better career there. So what what is what is your long term sort of thing? Are you just going fight to fight at the moment, or are you looking to try and stay active, doing this sort of well, thing? Well, it, I, I stay active. Fuck, I, I fight whenever yeah. people I offer me yeah. fights. Like, I'm always fighting and just like it's already we don't get old because we play we get old when we stop playing that's it it just and then it's uh, I have a lot of like there's another one I say it's uh, I tell the kids like uh, we don't get old or no not that one yeah that, that one we don't get old because we play we get old when we stop playing and I'm not I'm not looking to stop anytime soon like I enjoy doing it a lot of people they're like oh well you can get all these this brain damage and this and and one of the things I tell people, I'm like, when they're like, when you get hit in the head, and I tell them, like, dude, you don't even understand what causes the damage. It's not so much getting hit in the head. I, uh, I explain to them, it's your brain stem. It's the back of your head what takes the damage. Like, think about when you get in a car accident, the whiplash. Now it's the same shit. Like, everyone talks about this, this magic button in the chin. I'm like, there ain't no fucking magic button in the chin. The jaw is the hardest bone in the body. When you talk, you're working it. When you're chewing, you're working it. You know what I mean? Like, it's an ever-working fuck. We're working around now talking. It's the whiplash of it. You know, you, you chop a tree down from the branch, from, from the, the bottom branch. Same thing with your fucking brainstem. You chop it down from the neck. It pushes everything back. You hit the head, the forehead. You know, you got all the weight to help fight it. That's well, an interesting way actually put it. To be fair, so I'm sitting here just picturing all these like um, these these ways you're explaining it. To be fair, and it, yeah, it makes complete sense, mate. And um, no, and you're right. And people just don't understand. You know, you keep making these comments about it. And if you're gonna, oh make yeah, it, a lot of people like 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 a lot of people don't understand. But then like when people come like like I I don't even really train any young people. I train older people. Like people like I have a guy who I trained at 72 years old. Wow. The doctors like him. And then I have the other lady the. the the, the kid's grandma, like, doctors want to know what they're doing because their, their health is changing, their lives are changing, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, like I can tell you, you don't get old because you play, you get old when you stop playing. Age is just a number, man. Look, Randy Couture thought he, till he was like 48, you know what I mean? He was oh, fighting yeah. people like Brock Lesnar and stuff, yeah, it didn't turn Fuck out the no, best. Dude. I looked up one of the oldest, look up the oldest fucking bare knuckles. Some guy retired at 72 back in the day, what like was in his the 1800s. I don't know, but he was 72 years old when he retired. Wow, man. And, that, and back then as well, that's like past life well, expectancy. Well, it was back then, like I said, now everything, everyone keeps getting softer and softer. It's like everyone's fucking entitled to something. like. And fuck, who knows? They probably would have retired with all these commissions now. Like, oh, well, you got to retire because you can't do this or this or that. It's like, you're going to tell me or, or because you could, you could possibly <laughs> die in this fight. And it's like, well, you do realize when I went to Iraq, I possibly could have died, but you guys didn't stop me from going. You know what I mean? You guys send kids to war left and right. But that I choose that, okay, like if I can die, like, that should be my choice. Okay, I could die. Fuck it. You know what I mean? I know you got like, these commissions and accept it and they'll follow their rules. That's it, mate. No, that's it. And uh, that's what a lot of people might not know about you as well. See, a lot of people know you closely will. Is that, you know, you haven't always been a fighter. You know, you, you also, you fought in a cage and you fought on, you fought for your country. You know, and um, give us, if, if, if you don't mind talking about <laughs> I it, guess give, give us a little bit. It wasn't, so, it wasn't so much of fighting for my country. Like, I'm not that whole patriotic American. Like, like I told you, but I grew up watching, like, fucking Platoon, Full Metal Jacket. And I was like, fuck, I want to see what war's like. Like, what's it like to kill someone? You know what I mean? Like, fuck. And what, you get away do it for fucking if, where it's not illegal you know what I mean well, and fair then enough. I went and did the fight and I was like and then it, it actually humbles you a lot like you see everybody the suffering like you see what really goes on over there and it's just like like fuck like then after that like, I just like I just take out like care packages and give it to people because 
Yeah, you just want to help people instead. Like, like, I went in there wanting to fucking kill and give that all a try. Like, and then I was like, yeah, that's not for me. Like, I, I, I'd rather fucking help the people out. Did you find it really helped, like, make you appreciate in life what you really have and what people really don't have? Well, you, you, you never know. Like, 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 in America, we always talk about how all these countries are so poor and they don't have food. And it's like, you, you don't realize, like, and I learned that in one of my uh, my health classes I took at one of my colleges I was, I was going to. And they say, you know, like, we talk about how poor everyone is. But then a lot of other people, they look at us. We're poor because a lot of the food we eat is not food. It's just fucking chemicals. You know what I mean? Like, we can chemically engineer fucking food now. Like, it's not real food. Yeah, but no, everyone no. else is poor and they can't they can't have food like we do. It's like, well, no, we don't have food. We have chemical. It's one of the things like, I teach the kids. I, I train them. Like, make sure it's food. I'm like, if you can't kill it or grow it, it's not fucking, it's not really good for you. Uh, that's it, mate. You're right. And how can we also live in a world now where people still aren't eating with all the money around? Yep. You know? Yep. There's so much money in this world. How are people still drinking dirty water? It's the biggest oh, question, yeah. isn't it? But hey, man, that's where people like you are bringing like, these younger generations in to get them away from getting into sort of any sort of criminal stuff or anything like that. And they're learning, they're learning a oh, discipline. Oh, sure. I, I, I tell these kids like, everything. Like, these kids, like, like a lot of stuff, like the way I teach them like, about sugar, like, I'm like, dude, that's a lot of fucking sugar. They're like, and they're like, uh, cause, like in America, it's got, we, they're like 33 grams of sugar. And I tell them, like, I understand what 33 grams are. And they're like, how do you know that? I was like, it's like, well, I, I wasn't always a good guy. Like, I used to sell drugs. And like, yeah, that's a lot of sugar. <laughs> I was like, when you measure it out in grams, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, that's a lot. <laughs> and then I would show them. And they're like, but you know what I mean? Like, I put it in their heads, like, of what things really are. I don't sugarcoat it. I just tell them what it is. And they're like, oh, shit. Like, same thing, like, I tell them, like, I was like, yeah, dude, I used to fucking do coke. Hello? Hello, mate. I'm here. Yeah, I'm listening, man. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I I'm just listening to your story, man. Yeah. I'm happily listening uh, here, man. Yeah, but I, I tell them, like, I used to do all that shit. And like, I tell them, I don't, I don't do the whole, like, oh, yeah, cocaine, this, it's bad, you know, slap the hand. Like, no, I tell them what it fucking does. I'm like, dude, I got a fucking hole burnt to my nose. Like, I can fit my whole pinky in my fucking nose. Like, I tell them, you know, what it, what it actually does to you. Not just, it's bad, it's bad. Like, no, and, like, they sit there like, oh, fuck that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, fuck, I got these kids afraid of sugar now. Like they 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 like they they tell like uh, one of the grandma she's like yeah he will tell me like that's too much sugar <laughs> it's got too much sugar. That's good though, mate. You know, like these people, these kids sometimes they learn better off their. I know you don't like being called the master or sensei, you know, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, well, it's them, just like you, are... you guys learn. They learn off of my mistakes. Like yeah. I tell them, I teach people from my mistakes. It's like you know how everyone always talks about if I knew what I knew back in the day, I'd be a millionaire. And I tell everybody, like, okay, well, one of the things I tell everybody, there's one family that did did that, they, and they got away with it. They took everything they knew from back in the day, and they became rich. And who it is? It's fucking Mayweathers. Think about it. Those uncles, his dad, they took everything they knew about boxing, and they put it in fucking Floyd. And now yeah. look at them. Yeah. Like, I tell everybody, everyone talks about how dumb he is. I'm like, how can you call that guy dumb? He's fucking rich. Exactly. Oh, right. well, when he stuttered, when he reads, I'm like, well, guess what? Some kids, some people stutter when they read because they're, they're nervous. It's yeah. not so much he's got brain damage. He could probably just been nervous. Yeah, look at Mike Tyson. He's got a stutter. Yeah, fuck you know Tyson. I mean? But even with Mike Tyson, like people talk about how he was greater than Floyd. I'm like, I don't think Tyson was that great. Tyson, look at him when he actually fought fighters that are well known. He lost to them. But if you look at everyone else on his record, like who the fuck were those guys? But everyone talks about how big and bad he was. To me, like I say, if you look at Floyd, Floyd fought everybody. Yeah, and then they were all bigger than him. Tyson, like I said, who he fight? Evander Holyfield, he lost. Lennox Lewis, he lost. Fuck, he made Buster Douglas famous because he was knocking everybody out that he was supposed to knock out, and then when he fought someone that no one knew about, knock got knocked out. So it's not what it's about, is it really? Sort of thing. And um, also another one who had a bit of a speech impediment was a famous British boxer, Chris Eubank. You know, and he was an incredible boxer as well. And his son's doing quite well as well at the moment, to be fair. Yeah. We've got some good British guys coming through slowly but surely. But you know what? Uh, you're seeing a lot of boxers moving over to this bare knuckle thing as well. Like, look at Paulie. Was it Malinaji? Is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah, Paulie. Paulie was a free. That, that was a shit fight. Like, I watched that fight. I'm like, come on. You guys, you're going to fucking fight? Like, people paid money for this. You know what I mean? Like, 
that's what I think. Like when people like, like if, if I'm fighting a fight where I know people are paying money, it's like I'm gonna entertain you. You know what I mean? Like I I know what I go to watch, but I, I to me, like I said like I go to fight. I enjoy fighting, dancing around like people talking about footwork and this. I'm like, dude, just don't. If you're running, you're running. No, I, I, don't, I don't call it footwork. I'm just I'm inside moving. You know, I'm in the in the pocket, moving in and out. Like like I don't I don't try to label things. It just to me, fighting is all about acting and reacting. That that's what it's all about. So what what made you what made you get into fighting initially? Like wanting to actually compete in combat sports. What what gave you that uh, initial push to do that? When I was a little kid, like well, not a little kid, but when I was in high school, I was getting a lot of fights, and everyone was like, "Dude, why don't you fight? Like you're really good at it." And then I ended up in the military, and uh, while I was in the military, I they had it one day where they they put gloves on. And we were just ball boxing for our PE. And uh, the first guy I boxed, I'm just like beating up with no problem. And then there was another guy who uh, they're like, oh, he's like, I want to go with him next. And like he throws a punch at me and I duck it and I freaking just clobber him with one punch, knock him out. <laughs> and then uh, everyone's like, holy shit, that guy's good. And then, then the instructor and me boxed. I ended up boxing with the instructor and I ended up breaking his nose and they stopped it and we could never do it again. And then, uh, a couple of years go by, then I, 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 I just, you know, I'm, I'm on this military base and I'm just bored. And I'm yeah. like, fuck, like, like, I find a, what was that? I think it was a jiu-jitsu gym I found. That I started training there. And then this one kid came over and he's like, oh, yeah, uh, I'm at this boxing gym. It's right around the corner if you guys want to come, come check it out. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I go check it out that Monday. And then, fuck, next thing you know, Friday I'm fighting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Call it. Cause I, I showed up to the gym Monday and I'm like, they're like, so what do you want to do? You want to get in shape? You want a six pack? I'm like, I already got one of those. Yeah. And I'm like, I just want to fight. They're like, what? I was like, I just want to fight. And they put me in the, the ring with this kid that won the golden gloves. And they're like, like, Oh fuck. Like this guy can fight. <laughs> and then, yeah, like I said, next thing you know, Friday I'm fighting. <laughs> Quality. That's what it is. It's lovely. It's great to hear. You know, so many people have different, um, backgrounds and how they get into it and stuff and you know you've you've gone through it all and do you think do you feel fighting in the military played a big part to your mentality of getting in the cage and fighting someone in the cage it seems like nothing compared to fighting in iraq no i don't want to say the military it's just like my whole general upbringing you know like in high school i said i started liking the fight a lot like yeah i'm really good at it and i just like i just enjoy it like I, I don't like fighting random guys on the street that don't know how to fight. I'm like, that's, that's not fun. You know what I mean? That's just dumb. Like, like I've had guys come up to me before and they'll try to fight me. And I'm like, I'm like all right, give me $1,000. And when I beat you up, you can give me another $1,000. Like, why would I do that? I'm like, because that's the minimum amount I make for fucking fighting. Like, you know what I mean? I don't do this shit for free. I like doing it, but there's risks. Like I tell everybody, you can risk breaking your hand. You can risk freaking getting cut. Luckily, I got VAs. So I can even if I got in a fight, I can get it taken care of. But yeah, it's not, I just don't want to put that fucking dilemma on anyone. No, exactly. I mean, you don't be getting yeah, exactly that sort of thing. And the end of the day, you're a fighter. You're paid to do this sort of thing. And yeah, you know it's I mean? profession. You... It's not fucking too bummed on the street. And I'll tell you what, though, what's interesting is um, why did you decide to go to bare knuckle fighting? If you mind me asking, from mixed martial arts. What what what, uh-huh. what 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 drew you towards it? I don't know. I'm just hitting someone. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's, to me, like it's hard, to me, it's all fighting. Like, okay. It's 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 it's, it's, it's like, like I I, bo- I do boxing. I do bare knuckle. I do MMA. I try to do kickboxing, but I couldn't find any anybody. And I tell you, I just enjoy fighting. Like it just it's like like it's an adrenaline rush. Like like think about people, there's people who smoke weed. Like I, I didn't really I never liked weed. Like it just put me to sleep. But when I would party, you know, I would do blow, and I'd be up all night fucking going crazy. Because, like, you know, it's like an adrenaline drug. But, yeah, I, and I guess that's, that's basically what I am. I'm just an adrenaline junkie. It's your natural high, as they say, yeah? Getting in that cage. Oh, yeah. That's like my, oh, shit. It's time to get down. That's it, mate. That's it, mate. You've obviously got the, definitely got the right mentality for it. You're not well, that, that, that One of the things, like, when I was going to school, too, I learned was... Uh, you, you ever know like, how people talk about how nervous they get right before they fight? Like, I'm so nervous, da 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 like, the one thing, and I always tell it, and people, when they start to understand it, they're like, oh, fuck, that's what that is. Because, you know, you got those trainers like, oh, well, you're just nervous. It's it's because of the fight. Like, no, it's not called nervous. It's your fight or flight instinct. Because notice when they, everyone gets in the cage, that, that, that nerve goes away. And it's like I said, it's not the nerve. It's you're in that fight mode. 
but before that, like I said during that fight or flight mode where you're like, okay, am I going to fight or am I going to fucking flight? I'm going to run. And then boom, like I said the fucking bell rings, fucking fun punches start flying and that nerve goes away because you're now in fight mode. No, oh, man, that's it. And um, so what, what is that? Is that like basically that, that's that, is that is that the mentality you just take going into every fight? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> No, that's it, man. That's it. That, that's the mentality everyone should have, and that 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 acts that that's that's probably a lot of people say that's nearly ninety percent of the fight game. You know, is getting in there and having the right mentality. You could. Well, that's could, like I said. You, everyone's got to realize what, what what it really is. Like I said, thinking that it's not that I'm nervous, I'm worried. Like, no, you're not. It's just like I said, fight or flight. That's it, man. It's a very interesting way to put it, and it's a very good message to put out to people listening, and as well to your students. And what a great and just simple simple words, and what a great um. You know what I mean? A great message to put across to people. Fantastic. And um, to talk us about, like, obviously your next fight. Obviously, you'll take any fight. You'll fight anyone anywhere. But tell us a little bit about your next opponent, if if you know too much about him. Uh, he's a former world champion boxer, but he's lost his last three fights. You know, it's he's he's it's it's gonna be a good fight. Like, like but the thing I I tell him, he's oh, I'm a boxer. I'm like, bare knuckles is a lot different than a boxing glove. You know, with a boxing glove, you can hit. And it's very hard to break your hand. But trust me, when you swing, you better make sure you're hitting right and landing right. And then that's the other thing that a lot of these guys don't realize. Like, oh, well, boxing. Like, like uh, if you watch my first bare knuckle fight, like, uh, I remember fucking Antonio Tarver. He's like, oh, he's holding the back of his head. I'm like, well, no shit. You're allowed to do that. You know what I mean? Like, this ain't boxing, buddy. We're fucking bare knuckle fighting. So what's so a lot of people see like it's what better look at bare knuckle fighting. And I think right. So is this better? Is it because it looks like boxing? Obviously, when people go down, they get a count. Obviously. So what is the difference between that bare knuckle, apart from obviously no gloves? Obviously, what is the main differences between bare knuckle fighting and normal boxing, like in style and technique? Uh like I said, fuck, I can hold the back of your head and punch you. Okay. I can hold like that. That's. And you're allowed to do that in BK, yeah? Yeah, we were allowed to do that. Freaking. Like you said, there's no gloves. Like the main thing is just like the 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 resting, the holding, and fucking grabbing. Like, but the thing I think that's one of the things where the, the, a lot of these guys, like the the, the boxers, I think they're gonna get, they, they don't understand like the holding part. Like I'm allowed to grab you. And then that's the thing with me is like I I'm, I come from MMA background, so I understand how to hold someone and hit them. You know what I mean? Manipulate your body while I'm hitting you. So what's the ruling then with the hot, with the clinching then? Because obviously in MMA you clinch up against the ropes and you can obviously you can only clinch for boxing. three seconds. Like the the, when the last time I did it, they said you're only allowed three seconds. Like if you weren't busy, they stopped it right away. Okay, break. Like I said, you could go watch my last one. Like they they would break us, but I'd be right on that guy's ass from fucking it within a second. Yeah, it's just all still, forward pressure. So still a bit more learning for the referees and things like that as well. Oh, yeah. Maybe with the sport. But the sport is growing very quickly. Um, you've got these organisations popping up now, like BKFC really like opened up with obviously bringing people like Artemon and Chris Lieben and people like that. And then now, Valor is getting this huge name as well, especially with someone like Ken Shamrock backing it. Like, how lucky do you feel like to be involved in something like that? Or to, I know you like to do it for the money. You know, you'll fight anyone. It's for all the money and stuff like that. Obviously, you're still a fighter. Well, for me, like I said, I, I'm enjoying like, to help a, a pioneer like Ken. You know what I mean? Like I always hear people talking about oh, he has money problems or something, but to try to help him build an organization, and I'm pretty sure Ken will try to get it for the fighters. He'll try to do stuff for fighters because he comes from that background, understanding, you know, what it's like to suffer and fucking, but try to pursue your dream. Did I read somewhere? Or tell me if I'm wrong. Like I might be being say stupid. Is he competing in the organization himself as well? I don't know. I heard rumors about that too, but I don't think he is. You know. Kansas, it's time for him to ride off in the sunset. You know, you had a good career. You had a long career. Whether you win or lose on your last fight, you know, you, you go out on your, you're, you're going out on your own, on your own, you know. When you decide you want to stop, that's when you stop. It doesn't matter what anyone, oh, well, someone thinks this or that. Like, I don't care what you think. This is my life. Like, and I'm going to live it. No, that's fair enough, mate. It's fair enough. And is this your this is this your life now? Is this what you're oh, gonna yeah. do? Is 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 it gonna are you gonna stick with the bare, the bare knuckle world, or if an MMA fight opportunity comes, you'll take that or K one? What what's what's your what's your like like your year plan at the moment? I don't make plans. I just live life as it goes. <laughs> that's it, man. That's it. But if it, if it was up to you, would you like to continue just doing the bare knuckle stuff? Oh yeah, I feel like it's hard. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna keep fighting. Yep. 
fighting teacher. But I tell you, like, I don't like doing that whole, oh, well, down the road this because that, that just that just puts a a okay. kink in everything. Like when you plan too much, you start thinking about like, oh, well, I'm gonna retire at this. Like, well, now you're not you're not living. You're not fucking you know trying things. Like now you're just you're setting this 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 goal. Like, and this is this is as far as I'm gonna go. This is all I'm gonna do. Like, like I tell everybody. If I'm telling myself, oh, yeah, I'm going to retire after this fight, guess what? I'm not going to fight because that's in the back of your head. Well, yeah. I'm going to retire after this fight, so I'll just throw it. I'm like, no, fuck that. Like, that the thought of retirement will come at the end of a fight. Like, okay, but I'm, I'm done with this shit, you know? And fuck it, not even that. Like, it won't even be the fight when I decide I want to retire. It's going to be like, yeah, fuck this. I don't want to cut weight no more. I don't want to do that no more. You know what I mean? I want the long hours. Like, But that's the thing. I tell you, I enjoy Like, Like, I watch all these other guys, like, fucking wearing their sauna suits and fucking starving themselves and oh my god i haven't had water in so long I'm like what the fuck i drank like three gallons of water the fucking two days before weigh-ins i fucking had a steak dinner the day of after before weigh-ins you know what i mean like there's a lot of science and all this stuff but everyone always does the whole oh yeah it's all about having balls like i had a lot of trainers like that i talk about like having balls but these motherfuckers never had the balls to even fight but it's like so. So where, where did you learn about the balls of fighting? 